How about it? Go ahead, Frank. Okay, and here we go. Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to the 1,156th regular meeting and public hearing of the Livonia City Planning Commission. I wish to inform all interested persons in the audience that for petitions on tonight's agenda, which involve a question of zoning, the Planning Commission will make a recommendation to the City Council, and the City Council, after holding their own public hearing, will make the final determination as to whether a petition is approved or denied. The Planning Commission holds the only public hearing on a request for a preliminary plats and or vacating petitions. The Commission's recommendation is forwarded to the City Council for the final determination as to whether the petition is accepted or rejected. If a petition requesting a waiver of use or a site plan is denied tonight, the petitioner will have 10 days in which to appeal the decision in writing to City Council. Resolutions adopted by the City Planning Commission will become effective seven days after the date of adoption. <clears throat> the Planning Commission and professional staff have reviewed each of these petitions upon their filing. The staff has furnished the Commission with both approving and denying resolutions which the Commission may or may not use depending on the outcome of the proceedings tonight. If our Secretary uh, is ready, please call the roll. Oh, I see who's all on here. Mrs. Smiley. Present. Mrs. McHugh. Present. Mr. Bajero. Here. Mr. Long. Here, wherever here is. Mr. Ventura. I'm here. Karen Magno's here. Chairman Wilshaw is here. And we have a full attendance. Thank you. Also with us tonight, we have Mark Tormina. Uh, we have Scott Miller. And we have uh, Stephanie Reese. We have uh, Deborah Walter, which is all from our planning department. And we also have uh, Casey O'Neill from our IS department uh, for technical assistance. Um, before we get started with the meeting, I wanna just make a few comments uh, for our petitioners and our audience members. Uh, for those watching this meeting or reading uh, these minutes of this meeting, maybe possibly years from now, uh, this is possibly the first meeting that the Planning Commission has not held in City Hall. Uh, due, the, due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and uh, the government's order to stay home and maintain separation between people, this is our first uh, of uh, possibly our first voting meeting held online. Uh, for those in attendance uh, tonight on our Zoom platform, or those are, that are watching our broadcast, uh, this meeting will essentially flow the same as our in-person meetings. Uh, with each item on our agenda, our planning director will start with giving a detailed explanation of the petition and background information. While that's going on, I would please ask that any petitioners uh, on that item or their representatives, please use the raise hand feature uh, found on the Zoom app over in the participants area. Or if you're connected by phone, you dial star nine uh, to raise your hand. And I will acknowledge you using the Zoom uh, application, which will then uh, allow you to unmute yourself We'll then ask that you introduce yourself and tell us more about your petition after Mr. Tormina is finished. Uh, to unmute, there's also a button on Zoom, which is near the raised hand button, uh, or you may dial star six if you're connected by telephone. After the commissioners have had a chance to ask questions of the petitioner, I'm also gonna ask if there's anyone in the audience that wishes to speak uh, to the commission regarding that item. At that time, any audience members may also use the raise hand button. I'll recognize you one at a time so that we can uh, give your comments to us and uh, we can ask you any questions if we have any. After we've finished with that dialogue, then I'll look for a motion from the commission and we'll take our vote. That's the normal process of our meeting and that's uh, how we'll uh, go about things tonight. Again, just want to reiterate, if you wish to participate during the meeting, at the appropriate times, please use the raise hand button and then use the unmute button after we've acknowledged you uh, so we can hear you. Uh, anyone connected by phone, again, those commands are star six and star nine, respectively, for raise hand and unmute. With that being said, we're going to dive into the public hearing section of our agenda. 
And if the secretary is ready, we'll start by having you read our first item. That is petition 2020-01-01, submitted by Pastor 4G LLC, pursuant to section 23.01 of the City of Livonia Zoning Ordinance number 543 as amended, requesting to rezone the eastern 150 feet of the property at 16975 through 16991 Farmington Road, located on the west side of Farmington Road between Oakdale Avenue and Six Mile Road in the northeast quarter of section 16 from OS Office Services to C2 General Business. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Mr. Tormina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as mentioned, uh, this rezoning petition involves property that is located on the west side of Farmington Road. It's between Bloomfield Drive and Six Mile Road. Uh, the subject property is just under an acre in size. It has 140 feet of frontage along Farmington Road by a depth of 300 feet. Uh, the westerly end of the site contains a one-story um, 8,400 uh, square foot multi-tenant office building. And then located between uh, the building and Merriman Road is the parking lot, which contains roughly uh, 77 uh, spaces. Uh, this rezoning petition affects only the easterly half of the property. Uh, the west half, including the office building, uh, would remain under the current OS zoning classification. The purpose of the rezoning is to allow for the construction of a full service fast food restaurant with drive up facilities. The C2 zoning allows full service drive up restaurants subject to waivers, u waiver use approval. Uh, Looking at the, uh, the location of the site in relationship to the surrounding air, um, uses and zoning, immediately to the north is a Shell gas station that is zoned uh, C2 general business. Uh, in addition, there are two small single story office buildings under the OS classification. And then lying to the south and to the west are single family homes that are part of the Burton Hollow Estates subdivision. To the east across Farmington Road is the Walgreens Pharmacy zone C1 as well as Bell Creek Condominiums owned R8. As previously mentioned, the site uh, presently has about 77 off-street parking spaces. At a minimum, the office use requires 34 spaces based on a ratio of one space for every 200 square feet of usable floor area. Required parking for restaurants is based on the number of customer seats as well as employees. The preliminary site plan contains no information as to the amount of seating or the number of employees for the restaurant. The layout, as you can see here, shows 46 shared parking spaces available for both uses. With a minimum of 34 spaces needed for the office use, there would only be 12 spaces available for the restaurant. The site plan shows that a majority of the parking is located adjacent to the restaurant and only 12 spaces are provided near the office building with the drive-through lane separating the balance of the spaces needed to support the office use. Future land use plan in this case does show the subject site as corridor commercial. And with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'll be happy to read out the correspondence on this item. We have several several letters. Yes, we received uh, several pieces. Uh, please go ahead. Our first uh, item of correspondence is, and the first several letters are from uh, the uh, our interdepartmental um, correspondence. So the first is from our engineering division. It's dated February 14th and it reads as follows. In accordance with your request, the engineering division has reviewed the above reference petition. We have no objections to the proposed rezoning at this time. The parcel is assigned the address range of 16975 to 16991 Farmington Road with the address of 16979 Farmington Road being assigned to the overall parcel. The proposed building location is currently serviced by public water main and sanitary sewer, as well as private storm sewer. The submitted drawing does not indicate any utility connections, so we do not have any knowledge of impacts to the existing systems at this time. Per existing drawings, the existing medical office building water service runs through the area of the proposed building and will need to be re relocated. Also, the developer will need to cross Five Mile Road for any new water service leads as the existing main is located under the right turn lane on the opposite side of the roadway. It should be noted that should the subject property, should the subject project move forward, the proposed construction will be required to meet the Wayne County stormwater ordinance, including detention requirements and permits will need to be obtained 
from the Wayne County Department of Public Services for any work within the Farmington Road right-of-way. A full review of the proposed development will be completed when plans are submitted for permitting. And that letter is signed by David Lear, PE, Assistant City Engineer. I'll just note one correction to that letter. It was mentioned five mile, and in fact, I think he meant six mile road. Uh, next, we have a letter from our Department of Finance. It's dated February 11th. Uh, they indicate that they have no, uh, that there are no outstanding amounts receivable, general or water and sewer, and therefore they have no objections to the uh, proposal. That letter is signed by Connie Kumpula, Chief Accountant. Next letter, letter dated February 21st, is from uh, Linda Shield, Treasurer of the City of Livonia, indicating that there are no taxes due, therefore she has no objections to the proposal. And then uh, lastly, we have a uh, department letter from um, the Department of Assessment dated February 12th uh, from Kathy Cedar that, that reads, a lot split would be necessary in order to rezone the eastern 150 feet of 16975 to 16991 Farmington Road. It appears petitioner has included a proposed lot split with legal descriptions. This proposal should be submitted to the Department of Assessment for processing. The application and requirements for a lot split can be found on the city website at pavonia.gov. So the next several items, uh, Mr. Chairman, are from the uh, are from residents. Uh, these are all in the form of emails that were submitted in connection with this petition. And I'll begin first with a an email from Adrian Floyd, dated April 13th, that reads, to whom it may concern, we have learned that there is a proposed change for the zoning of the lot on Farmington Road south of Six Mile. It is our understanding that a drive through restaurant is proposed at the site. I am against the change in the development of a fast food restaurant at this location. It is very close to a residential neighborhood. And in fact, me and my family ride our bikes or walk by there frequently. This would increase the traffic and create a hazard. As well, the restaurant being open very late is a nuisance to our families and children. It has been noted that there are other lots in Livonia that are vacant. Other location should be rehabbed instead of inflicting this type of business so close to a residential area. Please do what is best for the families of Burton Hollow and Livonia in general by standing by your motto of families first. That location is no place for a fast food restaurant. Again, that uh, email is provided by Adrian Floyd, who gives uh, the address of 33686 Grove Street in Livonia. Next is an email from uh, Louise McGee, uh, dated April 11th, that reads, ladies and gentlemen, please do not approve the request for rezoning for to a drive through restaurant. There already is so much traffic at that intersection that at times it backs up several blocks just to make a turn. With the traffic for the, the always busy SOS office, the two gas stations and high school traffic, let alone all the cars driving down six miles to get to the freeway, I can't imagine how difficult it would be to get in and out of the restaurant. And the noise at night, everyone knows what it's like when the bar closes and people want to eat. It will echo throughout the neighborhood. I live on Farmington in the first block south of Six Mile in the Burton Hollow subdivision. Please keep it out of the neighborhood. There are a ton of high school track runners, dog walkers, joggers, bike riders, and babies, babies strolling on my block, all of whom would be placed in danger with cars trying to get out of the parking lot and drive, drive through and making turns. Thank you for listening to your neighbors. Next is uh, an email from Kevin Golan dated uh, April 11th that reads, I am writing in my opposition to the rezoning and lot split proposed at 16989 Farmington Road. This corner property, property has already been split into three parcels. The C2 zoning is much higher intensity than OS and immediately adjacent to existing residential properties. The split property has been offered for sale. What will become of it? Anything allowed by C2? Uh, the proposed fast food restaurant will emit odors and sounds well beyond its property lines and into the adjoining residential area. An increase in turning traffic so near the intersection will be a hazard. Traffic to an OS property is much less intense and generally speaking follows nine to five hours in appointment calendars. There have been other changes at this corner in recent years. The transition of the bank property into a busy eye clinic, the transition of Arbor Drugs to a busy Secretary of State office, the move by Ward Church out of Livonia, the parsonage also left our sub. I recall the pastor and his wife on their regular walks through the neighborhood. The condos and Walgreens are nice, although the condo stairs exclude many people from living there. And I can't say that these buildings are a pillar of Livonia as Ward Church was. We have a new smoke shop displaying an automatic rifle hookah and 
a large marijuana leaf in their front window. When I was a kid, the corner store had penny candy and baseball cards and not paraphernalia. This is not an improvement. Is there an overabundance of OS properties in Livonia due to new construction? There are many successful new office buildings along Farmington Road. A zoning change to C2 is not an improvement to this property or for the neighborhood. Again, that's from Kevin Dolan. Next is an email from Hassan Zayat, dated April 10th, that reads, Hello, my wife and I moved to Livonia from Dearborn Heights in September. We currently live on Wood Street near Whitby. I've heard that there are plans to rezone the lot near 6 and Farmington to potentially build a drive through and I'd like to voice my opinion. Firstly, I think it would be a horrible move. It would bring in unwanted traffic, literally and figuratively, to an already busy intersection. High schoolers will want to wander that area, throw their trash all over the place. drive throughs should be dedicated to areas east of Merriman. We moved to this area specifically because there was a sense of security, peace of mind. Please do not allow this lot to be developed into a drive through especially not a Burger King. Thank you. Again, that's from Ian Zayat, Hassan Zayat, uh, Zayat of Zayat Construction Company. Uh, next is a, an email from um, Darcy Morales. Uh, dated April 10th, that reads, Dear Planning Commission, I am a resident of Burton Hollow and, and am imposed, opposed to the proposed proposal for a drive through restaurant to be built at Six Mile Farmington. My husband and I worked and saved for 15 years in order to be able to purchase our home in Burton Hollow in 2015. We chose the location because it was quiet and family oriented. We also appreciated that there were not fast food restaurants and party stores nearby, unlike our former neighborhood at Seven Mile and Inkster. I have concerns such that a restaurant will cause an increase in traffic at an already busy intersection. The current amount of traffic during rush hour is enough. drive through restaurants also tend to be open late. The residents living in nearby homes should not have to deal with the disruption of listening to someone order burgers or tacos at 2 a.m., not to mention the added pollution from cars idling in line and discarded food wrappers. I ask that you please consider rejecting the proposal. There are other locations that would be more fitting for such a business. Thank you for your consideration. Kindly regards, again, Darcy Marsolis, who gives, or Marolis, who gives uh, the address of 16060 Riverside. Uh, next is uh, an email from Laura O'Malley, uh, dated uh, April 8th, that reads, good afternoon. Please do not approve the rezoning at Six Mile and Farmington lot to a drive through restaurant. I live in Burton Hollow and have several concerns. Traffic at the corner is already difficult during morning and afternoon traffic. Having a restaurant there would exacerbate the issue. Two, North Livonia has held its home values better than South. Although I have no doubt that Plymouth and Middle Belt Corridor brings in revenue for the city, the crime in that area has also increased due to the nature of the businesses that have been built there in the last 10 to years. Three, Burton Hollow, Franco Villa, and nearby subs are still desirable places to live for prospective buyers. With the impending recession that is almost certainly guaranteed to occur due to COVID-19, the city and residents don't need something like this to further drive home uh, prices down in these areas. Thank you for your time, Laura O'Malley, who gives her address is 16142 Fairlane Drive. And lastly, we have, uh, no, excuse me, two more emails. Um, the next is dated April 14th from uh, Becky Million, and it reads, Dear Planning Commissioners, Livonia has always prided itself on planning that makes sense for a community, an industrial corridor, shopping corridor, Middle Belt Road, Plymouth Road, Seven Mile, and plenty of residential neighborhoods. A plan for a drive through restaurant on Farmington Road at Six Mile Road is unnecessary. We have plenty of drive through restaurants nearby, seven in Farmington, five in Merriman, Merriman and Plymouth, five in Middle Belt. With restaurants come rats. With drive through restaurants come increased traffic. These are uncertain economic times. Opening a new restaurant seems risky and can potentially leave Livonia with another vacant building. Six Mile and Farmington is nicely residential and I for one would like to see it stay that way. Sincerely, Rebecca Million. And lastly, an email dated April 14th from Michael and Carolyn Chico who give their address as 34653 Grove Street. We are firmly against the approval of this application for several reasons. Number one, traffic on that corner is already congested, especially at peak times, school dismissal, rush hours, and this would only add to that, plus increased accidents. Number two, the noise from this is not conducive to a neighborhood, particularly if operating drive-through hours are allowed well into the early morning or 24 hours. 
Number three, property values could be affected with this type of establishment so close to houses, impacting those adjacent to it mostly severely, most severely. Four, there is already this type of business within two miles of this location, so there is no need for another. Five, food establishments such as this are a breeding ground for rats and other animals that we don't need to attract any more of. In addition to these points, we feel that this application is being rushed through the process. The sign for the proposal was only recently put up, not giving residents enough opportunity to learn of it, much less have an opinion about it or have that opinion heard. In these unprecedented times of a city closure and stay at home order, the utmost should be done to ensure all those affected are heard and to avoid any semblance of impropriety. Impropriety. Uh, with all this in mind, please deny the applicant's request for the proposed change. Thank you. Mike Lennon and Karen Chico will give their address as 34653 Grove Street. And Mr. Chairman, that is the extent of the correspondence. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, we did receive one other piece of uh, correspondence through our uh, Zoom chat from one of our uh, audience members. If you would like, I can quickly read it. Uh, it's a note from uh, Mr. Robert Keepling, uh, who resides at 16643 Whitby in Livonia, and he says he highly opposes the change in the zoning of the proposed drive through restaurant. Please consider the residents of Burton Hollow. Sincerely, Robert Keepling. So I wanted to make sure that that also made it into the record. And um, we'll also have an opportunity for any of our audience members to speak here in just a moment. Uh, so as now that we've heard uh, from Mr. Toromina, is there any questions for our planning director from any of the commissioners? Ian and Sam, I've got a question. Go ahead, Sam. Mark, you mentioned corridor commercial early on. Can you explain to me exactly what that means for this piece of property? Uh, corridor commercial is uh, a, a land use classification. It's part of Livonia Vision 21. It was uh, created um, just in the last couple of years to encompass not only um, retail uses uh, that, would, um, that would include restaurants, uh, but also office uses. So it's a broader land use category that uh, basically includes a, a very wide range of uh, commercial land uses from office to, uh, to retail to restaurants. All right, th thank you, Mark. Okay, any other questions for our planning director? Uh, I have a question, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Ms. Smiley. Yes, what's the occupancy on that um, office that's behind there? Um, you know? Uh, no, I do not know. Um, uh, Mr. Pastor, the uh, petitioner, I'm assuming uh, would have additional, uh, more information on that. But it's a medical office. Is it a medical? I, I think uh, traditionally it's, it has contained many, uh, several medical uses. Whether or not it's exclusively medical, I can't say. I, I'm sure there have been general office uses uh, within that uh, facility over the years. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Smiley. Mr. Chair, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chair, I, I may have missed this. This might have been part of our discussion early on, but um, as far as the accessibility to that building behind this lot or what, what the proposed lot is, how, how right now do they access that building? Is there any other driveway other than the driveways off of Arlington? Mr. Tormina? Yeah, so um, hopefully you can see the drawing. I'm going to go to the aerial okay. uh, photograph, and it shows how uh, access to this site um, is, is currently provided uh, with two driveways um, from Farmington uh, Road. So there's no, presently there is no access uh, to Six Mile Road from this site. Um, it's strictly limited to those two driveways on Farmington Road. Does that answer your question? It, it does. What, from a from a city standpoint, or from I mean, would there be requirements that something would be have to be developed for that other building in the back prior to to this being have rezoned? Be yeah, because yeah. otherwise they're you know they're going to drive through a Taco Bell to get to this office building. Am I correct? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you can see the layout um, 
you know, for what, for, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Okay. exactly what that would do. I mean, it, okay. what the access points would be retained. Uh, the, the building is shown on this preliminary plan is located on the south half of the property. Uh, there would be a, a circular uh, movement of, uh, of traffic uh, behind the, the building uh, and then on the south side uh, where the drive up operation uh, would occur. Uh, I'm assuming that the uh, order window would be somewhere behind the building um, to the extent that that you know, conflicts with the, uh, the traffic uh, moving uh, to and from the office building. I think that's something that's uh, worth, worthy of uh, discussion. Worth discussion. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McCune. I, I think, uh, Mr. Tormina, it's safe to assume that cross access agree agreements would have to be in place to ensure that that building in the back would have access, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Any other questions for our planning director? Mr. Wilshaw? Before, uh, uh, Mr. Ventura? Yes, uh, Mr. Tormina, uh, looking at the parking that you recited in your uh, disposition there so we really don't know whether or not adequate parking is being provided for in this preliminary site plan is that correct mr Tarmina? uh yes I, I apologize um parking would be deficient uh, as I pointed out, uh, the office use alone would require a minimum of 34 parking spaces. Uh, if this is a full service restaurant, um, meaning that it would have more than 30 seats, uh, that would require 15 parking spaces in and of itself, uh, plus a number of employees. Usually at a, a restaurant like this, there's no less than five employees at, at, at a given time. So you add that to the 15, you're looking at 20. Um, the 46 uh, shared spaces between the two, uh, clearly it would not meet the, uh, the zoning ordinance requirements. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Ventura. Any other questions for our planning director? If not, uh, I did have one additional comment that I received uh, through our chat from a Mr. Uh, Ronald uh, Colbert or Colbert. Uh, from 34259 Grove Drive, saying that he strongly opposes this. Uh, so I wanted to get that in our record as well. Uh, with that, I believe we have all the comments on the record now. Um, Mr. Pastor is here. He can unmute himself when he is uh, ready to go. And we'll just ask that he starts, uh, as we always do with our petitioner, uh, by giving your name and address for our record. And then have any additional information that uh, you may have on this petition, Mr. Pastor? You'll need to unmute yourself first. We're waiting on Mr. Pastor to find his unmute button. Yes. Mr. Pastor? Our petitioner seems to be having a little bit of technical difficulty uh, getting unmuted. petitioner to uh, answer some questions here on this petition so if uh, John Pastor can find his unmute button in zoom or uh, use the star six um, 
He's connected by phone to unmute himself. I believe star, actually star nine, I believe unmutes. Mr. Pastor is not able to unmute himself for some reason. Mr. Chairman, as the host, are you able to affect uh, the I can only request that he unmutes himself. I can't actually force him to be unmuted. Okay. What would be the uh, proper procedure to uh, perhaps give buy him some time to either call into the meeting or find another way. Can can we move on to another item and leave this one open, or what? What's the procedural possibilities that we have here? Well, we could we could treat this as a uh, in a situation where the petitioner is not here and go to the audience for uh, comments, but. Uh, Realistically, I, I think the petitioner has got some questions uh, to answer from us. So if the commission is okay, um, we could move on to our next item and come back when Mr. Pastor is able to speak because I, I think that this is an important uh, item that deserves to have the petitioner uh, fully represented along with our audience members. Agree. Let's see. Uh, one second, let me just see. There is one person in the audience wishing to talk. Let's see if it's Mr. Pastor. I'm going to uh, allow this person to talk. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, is, there, is that you, John? Yeah, he did come here from my computer. And won't let me go on. Let me go uh, turn off one of your audio sources so you're not echoing. Yeah, that's what I just did. So excellent. I'm, for some reason, my screen went blank, and I'm still trying to log back on, so I don't know what's going on. Well, we got you here on the audio, so that's perfect. We can hear you. Okay. So uh, again, uh, we'll just, uh, as we normally do with our normal meetings, have you start with your name and address for our record. Uh, John Pastor, 34018 Beacon, Livonia, Michigan, 48150. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Pastor. And would you like to add anything uh, to your rezoning request uh, from what we've heard already from Mr. Tormina? Um, other than, hang on a second, I have my notes here. Um, yeah, the um, actual, the size of the actual building behind the um, property is uh, depending on what we're going to do with that building, whether we demo it, whether we keep part of it. We're also trying to get the piece of property, um, as you guys know, or as I said last time at the meeting, for negotiations with the guy with the, um, the, the um, medical office that's just north of our property that also ties into our property here. So we believe that the parking will not be an issue at that time. Uh, I heard some of the residents and some of the complaints about the traffic. This is a Taco Bell. This doesn't drive more traffic. It takes traffic from the existing traffic. Um, studies have been like that. All fast food restaurants, they're not destinations. Um, people only go two miles to three miles out of their way um, to go to a restaurant. They're not going to come three or four miles to come to a restaurant. So you're not going to get more increased traffic. The approaches uh, for getting in and out of that, um, that uh, property, our approach actually, the exit approach, will actually be further away from six miles than the Walgreens is right now. So there, we have, we're further away from that. Um, if you remember, you just rezoned uh, the, the, um, the uh, gas station there, uh, which is a lot closer 
you know, you want to talk about traffic turning left and right out of there, it's a lot confusing. That's where every, you look at every gas station, it's similar to that. We've done these kind of um, places all over the city where we have um, a building in front of another building. Uh, I'll even bring you over to the Wendy's and the Tim Hortons on Five Mile of Merriman, where you have a gas station, Tim Hortons, and a Wendy's all right in front of a uh, strip center and stuff. And they barely, you know, they're really uh, scrolls in there pretty tight. The, um, it is not a 24 hour restaurant. I um, want people to know that. Uh, restaurants or the Taco Bell that I know of, or any restaurants that I'm aware of, have rats. Um, that is a major violation of a health department code, so our health department would be all over them if that ever happened. And again, uh, looking to improve that area. As you know, that, um, uh, that area, that building has been sitting there um, pretty vacant for a long time. It does have three um, tenants there that are actually on a month to month. Um, the building is in pretty bad um, repair. So this is a way of uh, redeveloping not only that building, if, if we can make the site plan work, um, we would like to keep it because we also believe that that building is also going to be a buffer for the noise. It's going to be a buffer for the way it looks and, and for all your, quote, um, additional cars and stuff. Uh, so those are some of the um, the items that I would bring up at this time. And looking forward to answering any questions that you may have. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pastor. Do we have questions for Mr. Pastor from the commission? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Bongero. Yes. Mr. Pastor, um, yep. I know you're early into this. Have you, um, what are you considering about your stormwater retention? Um, we actually, Obviously. go ahead. Yeah, we would be, we would need all the uh, local community and um, detention system. Okay. So, so we haven't gone have... that far yet because we're still waiting for, you know, the, the temporary approval or at least having um, going to the council for the next meeting. So remember, we still have a couple more hearings to go. We still have to get site plan approval through you. Um, it's just the first step and hopefully that we can, um, you know, present all those things to you. Okay. Um, I was there today and I, I backed in over at Walgreens and stayed there for about 15 minutes. And it just seems awkward, you know, on that placement. And um, I guess I just would ask, is there, is there a need for another Taco Bell? Uh, yes, if, that, if there was a Taco Bell, um, actually the franchisee and Taco Bell corporate both wanted the site. Okay. So now, as you know, the closest uh, Taco Bell right now is right on Eight Mile, um, just uh, east of Farmington. Yeah. So and that's okay. over, you know, it's about two and a, quarter miles away. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other questions for our petitioner? <laughs> Mr. Chair. Uh, Mrs. McHugh. I'm, I, I'm just going to go back to my original, my original question I had for Mr. Tormina, but I'm curious as to the thought process to the, on the access to that building behind the Taco Bell. Are you just going to, I mean, how, how are you going to set that up where it just seems like there's going to be a lot of different moving pieces um, between people in the Taco Bell parking lot, the drive through, and then trying to access that, that business building behind that, regardless of what kind of business you have in there. But it just doesn't seem like that flows real well. Well, that's what we're still working on the site plan for that. And that's what, you know, with the parking requirements and we believe that we're really close with the, um, an offer of getting the parcel next to us. And that will relieve all parking and all that stuff for the building. And what we would almost do at that point is almost reposition that building. So it basically the doors would be more towards the six mile location so that they can have that parking of that. And we would take out that little building there. So we would have more than enough parking, more than enough access. I need to have access not only to Farmington Road, but you also have access to Six Mile Road as well. Okay, thank you. 
All right. Uh, any other questions for our petitioner from the commission? Mr. Wilshaw. Uh, do I hear Mr. Ventura? You do. Uh, Mr. Pastor, um, I will tell you uh, very honestly that I am in pretty much agreement with the comments made by the residents in the area there. However, um, I would be guided, I think, very strongly by the desires of the neighborhood. And I think that the neighborhood is at a significant disadvantage during the COVID lockdown. I anticipate that were people not confined to their homes, pretty much, um, that we'd have a lot more people in the auditorium than we have had write us emails and send chat messages. So my question to you is, would you be willing to defer and to table this, it, this issue this evening until after the COVID lockdown is raised and the community has an opportunity to come to the auditorium and speak for themselves? Um, Pete, as you know, as a commercial real estate uh, broker and stuff, I have X amount of days to get this uh, petition through before, before I lose my rights to the, the property. I have no problem. Um, I mean, Pete, you know as well as I do, nine people, um, some of them aren't even, I mean, they're, they're on the other side of the river and stuff. I do know that there's some that are there. I'll be more than happy to talk with any of those folks and, you know, calm their fears. The, um, you know, so I would be, again, this is not out of character. This is not out of a place. Um, that's one of the reasons why I thought that the building was so important to stay in the back side of that. So it could buffer those people. So they could not see that. I think going in and out of that property, I don't think that there's, there's really an issue there. I mean, people are doing it now. Um, so again, if we get to remember, it still goes to council with a public hearing. We have so many different uh, site plans that we go for. As you know, um, the people will have plenty of time to go before the uh, planning commission. And I believe nine people, I think there was nine, nine or 10 people that commented on that. I think it's a lot, you know, to a petition. And most of their concerns are basically, you know, the traffic, which, are, you know, most people know that a Taco Bell, Burger King, Wendy's, they don't increase traffic. They take traffic away because it's the local people that are going there. People from Canton aren't going to be going to Livonia at 6 and Farmington to go to a Taco Bell. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I mean, time is on my side. It's just as hard for me trying to get you guys information and meet with you because, again, I'd rather be up in front with my, you know, drawings and all that stuff so that we can at least show you what we're looking at um, so that everybody has a good, fair sense. But I don't know how else to say, you know, for the time frame. It's hurt me. The guy will not give us extensions. We've asked for an extension, and he won't give it to us. Or let me phrase it. He gave us a 30-day, which... We're already at the 30 day because we were supposed to be on last month's um, petition. And the sign for everyone, the sign has been up there for at least two months. I think it's been up there for two months now because it was up before our first meeting. It was up three weeks per, you know, per the ordinance until now. The sign has not come down, it's still there. So people have had plenty of time um, to look at this and stuff. So, and they'll have more time, as you know, to um, express their concerns. Mr. Ventura, does that uh, answer your question? Uh, it, it does. Uh, and uh, John, to your point about um, time limits, I'm a little surprised your seller won't give it to you in, in the transactions that I'm personally involved in. Uh, everyone you know, is making, making allowances for the unprecedented uh, condition. But if you're saying I'll be more than something I'll be more happy to I'll be more happy to send you over the email that the guy said he will not give me an extension. God, I am taking you at your word. I'm just telling you I'm surprised. Okay. I am too. Any other questions, Mr. Ventura? Uh no, that'll do it. Thank okay, you. Okay, is there 
Anyone else on the commission wishing to ask Mr. Ventura or Mr. Uh, Pastor a question at this point? Yes. Mr. Chair. Mr. Bongero. Yeah, just one last thing, kind of to Pete's point. Um, with the with Mr. Pastor pursuing the purchase of the parcel to the north, that might help the parking. We don't know. I, I, it kind of feels like this is a little, we don't have it all together. You know what I mean? There's still some missing pieces here. Well, remember for one thing, we're just talking about the zoning first. I have to come back before the site plan. And by that time we should have, whether we're tearing the whole building down, now parking's not an issue, or if we have another piece of property, again, parking won't be an issue. So we're talking just about the zoning as we're, we're doing right now. We're not even, in, in all fairness, we're not even supposed to be talking about the site plan because that's not what's before us here. So we're just talking about changing the zoning and you guys in council will do this too. Council will hold the final zoning until they're happy with the site plan and the way it looks and the way the cars move around and all that stuff um, and the site plan. So there is ways of, you know, stopping and or um, moving forward so that we can continue going instead of, this is a crazy time as everybody knows, um, but there's plenty of time to stop and or get you more information. Thanks. All right, thank you, Mr. Bongero. I believe I heard Mrs. Smiley. Yes, um, it's not so much a question as um, I don't find this comparable to Five Mile and Merriman. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I don't wanna give you any false hope because I'm a hard no on this. I just think it's inappropriate. It doesn't fit with, the, with what's going on. There's a fast food at seven in Farmington. It's on the, and that's a hard one in and out. And uh, I live in that area and I've, I just think it's a real bad idea. That's oh, Carol, I live in, as you know, I live in the area as well. Um, and that's the big burger, which was right. uh, approved through the Taco Bell and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, we actually have more distance between that and the light than the big burger does. Okay, well, I also don't think two miles is a hardship to drive for a Taco Bell. So I think it is, well, but Taco Bell is well served yeah. in there. Well, it depends on where you're at, because if you're at five miles in Newburgh, now you're talking four to five miles. I guess, okay, I just, I don't find it appropriate. Okay. All right, thank you, Mrs. Smiley. Uh, any other questions or comments for our petitioner before we go to our audience members? Mr. Chair. Uh, is that Mr. Caramagna? Yeah, yes, it is. Uh, you know, through all, this, all these questions and, and comparisons and, and, and likenesses to other other locations, I, I think what, what what I found driving over there is yeah, this has some opposition, but and I understand that. But when I went over there today and looked at what is really there now, you've got a dilapidated building, a dilapidated parking lot uh, next to a shell station that's going to get remodeled. I think there's an opportunity here for something. Um, and without a, without a final and good plan, I don't know what the answer is no here yet. Uh, there's opportunities to turn this down down the road. Um, that's my opinion right now. It, uh, it just looks run down. This is a bad piece of property looking at what I'm um, That's just my opinion for now. All right. Thank you, Mr. Caramagno. And again, I do want to, uh, as Mr. Pastor pointed out, just remind uh, both the commission and our audience members as we go to them, uh, that we are looking at the rezoning at this point, the site plan and questions around the site plan are, are uh, uh, just conceptual and we really are not looking at the site plan per se. Uh, our concern right now is, is a rezoning request of this parcel from office to C2 commercial journal business appropriate or not. So uh, that's that's what's on our mind right now. And that's uh, what we're gonna make a decision uh, on moving forward with uh, either for, against or tabling uh, when we get to that point. So uh, I just wanna make that comment. And if there's no one else on the commission wishing to speak to the petitioner, which I don't see anybody uh, jumping up and down, I will 
uh, go to our audience members. Uh, we do have a couple with their hands up. And again, I would just ask anyone in our audience that does wish to speak for or against this item, please click the raise hand button and we will uh, acknowledge you and give you a chance to speak. Uh, Mr. Pastor, we'll just ask that you stand by for a moment uh, and allow right. our presenters to speak to us. And I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Colbert. He uh, patiently had his hand up for quite a while here. He's welcome to uh, unmute himself and introduce himself, name and address. Sure. sure. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Hear you. Okay. I'm at uh, 34259 Grove Drive, which is Whitby and Riverside. Um, I, I understand what you were saying about the rezoning um, and then things, um, but our, our biggest concern here is it really doesn't fit, and um, our neighborhood absolutely opposes it. As you have looked, there has not been one statement in, you know, for the um, development of this property into this type of business. And I, I would think, as a commission, that, that would um, be something that you strongly look at because um, e even the person that wants to open it, uh, Mr. Pastor knows that he, he's driving that you're going to get the business from the local community. We're not going to support it. So you're going to have an empty building really quick and it's going to look ugly. Um, we, we've got empty strip mall right on Seven Mile in Farming Kid. So, so any arguments that we should be redoing it or putting it there, I don't think really works. Okay. Uh, we appreciate those comments. Anything else that you wanted to mention to us uh, before we move on? Uh, no, that's it. I your help, and um, I hope you make the right decision on this. Well, thank you very much. We do appreciate your comments uh, tonight, and thank you for attending our meeting. Please uh, stay tuned, and we will uh, see how the decision goes. Uh, we also have one additional person in our audience here. One moment. We're going to go to Mr. Kapling. There we go. Uh, I ask that Mr. Kapling please unmute and uh, again start with your name and address uh, for, for the record. Yes, my name is Robert Kapling. I reside at 16643 Whitby Street. Um, I am in between uh, six mile and five mile, you know, in the Burton Hollow sub. Um, I strongly oppose this uh, for several different reasons. A, the school kids that are walking to school, okay? That's taken into consideration. I also, I, did I hear that correctly when the gentleman had spoke that he was also interested in the adjacent property just west of the Shell Station? That is correct. Uh, he has indicated that he's been working on acquiring that property. Okay, what's his intentions of that property? We don't know at this time. That's uh, not part of this particular petition. Okay. Well, if um, I think that this thing needs to be tabled until there can be an open forum where the residents can come speak their mind, um, not through Skype or through the Zoom meeting. So mm -hmm. as proper representation from the neighborhood, there's 625 homes in, in this neighborhood and that type of building is going to increase the traffic. Yes, it will draw some traffic from the local neighborhood, but ultimately that's gonna increase the footprint, most specifically for the kids that are walking to school, walking to and from the school each and every day. And not to mention that there are, um, I live right on Whitby and there are the amount of traffic that comes out of Whitby right at that school hour um, it's crazy insane that kids have not been killed on that street right there, just the amount of traffic that comes out of there. And people just don't pay attention. You know, you can have the best intentions of putting, the, you know, a rock star Taco Bell right there, which is not a fit for the neighborhood by any means. But most importantly, you're putting our kids at risk. And if you put our kids at risk, you know, that's a major issue. I think the commission needs to, to, have, to hear out the neighborhood before any vote takes place. And that's just my own personal opinion. Uh, my kids are getting older, but we have, we've had such a huge amount of influx of young families moving into the neighborhood that it, this needs to be properly addressed. And regardless if that transaction, uh, that really, that, you know, that 
he needs to get an extension, you know, or he needs to find a new piece of property. Like Mr. Colbert said, there's an enormous amount of property right down the street that doesn't have a subdivision right next to it. So that's all I have to add. Thank you for hearing me out. Um, also, did, Doug, did uh, just out of curiosity, did you read in Doug Kelt's information into the into the file as well? Uh, I would have to go back and look through the emails. I, we had a number of emails. I'm not. Yeah, sure this wasn't I... an email. This was um, this was on the the, the Zoom um, chat box. Oh. Uh... Yes, no, I, I did not, but I will I will add his uh, to our record here. I'll, I'll read those out. I appreciate so, you pointing that out. No problem. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Kapling. And, and for what it's worth, uh, there there has been a couple fatalities at the Whitby and Six Mile uh, interchange in the past. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm shocked that there's not more. It's, uh, uh, it's crazy and singing. And you guys as a planning commission, you guys need to look at that. I don't know if that's your responsibility, but there is nowhere near the amount of, um, I mean, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of it's the residents, but so many people, since you guys have done, since Stevenson had done that turnaround there, it has got a, a hundred times worse than what, than it was previously. I've lived here for five, almost six years now, maybe it's seven years, but it's gotten, tremendously bad somebody's going to get hurt if you guys don't do something about that and maybe that's another thing that we need to bring to the table and i guarantee you anybody that has kids under 18 years old they will come to that meeting and you will be astonished by um the outpouring of uh support of something needs to happen there somebody's going to get hurt that's all i understand thank you very much mr capeling appreciate it thank you, thank you. Uh, let me uh, go to our next audience member, and I will then read out those uh, comments from uh, uh, Mr. Couts. Uh, our next audience member is Andrew McNeil. I'm going to select him, and he can unmute himself and uh, introduce himself. Yeah, can you hear me? We hear you. All right. Uh, my name is Andrew McNeil. I live at 16827 Surrey Street. Um, so I'm uh, right in the old Burton Hollow subdivision right there. So I'm right behind um, where you can see on the map where this is uh, planned to be. Uh, and my concerns, I have two concerns about this. Um, the first concern, maybe this is for a later point within this, um, but it uh, kind of corroborates what Commissioner Smiley was saying was, is this really necessary to have a Taco Bell in this location? We have two Taco Bells within driving distance from our sub here. Um, one being this, the uh, eight in Farmington location, and then the other one being over at five and middle belt. So, um, I mean, the five and middle belt is a little bit further away, but they're both Taco Bells. They're both within driving distance. However, often you want to get Taco Bell. Um, my second concern is, uh, is based on this location itself and based on the zoning is, um, when, when you look at the map there, a little bit further south of that driveway, there is the main exit off of, uh, I believe it's called Bloomfield. Um, is the main exit out of our subdivision there. So you'll see Bloomfield Drive. Um, during the hours of four to six on a Monday through Friday, you're, it's almost impossible to make a left turn out of our subdivision in that location. Um, when you add a Taco Bell there, more people coming in and out, I, I just know that that's gonna add to that. Um, and I'll just have to forget about making a left turn out of my subdivision during those hours. Um, and, and to corroborate with that, um, the intersection of Six Mile and Farmington. I don't know if, if it's available, but you could look at the, um, the accident reports within that intersection. We have accidents quite often within that intersection. And I just believe that this, this would add to that and just add to the congestion within that, that area. Okay, thank you, Mr. McNeil. I appreciate your comments. Uh, let's see. And I, I did want to uh, read out the uh, one comment that came from Mr. Kautz uh, in our audience through the chat window. He said that he's sorry that he's having a hard time with his connection, but, but please uh, recognize my input tonight uh, that I'm afraid that not all citizens in Burton Hollow subdivision may be able to place their concerns as this is a new technology and a majority may not be able to voice their concerns. I beg that you consider to table this until our residents are able to participate in a better forum. And that's uh, from Mr. Doug Kautz. 
So I wanted to uh, acknowledge his comment as well. Is there anyone else in the audience uh, wishing to speak for or against this item? If so, please click the raise hand button. And then if there is no one else, so what we'll do is go back to our petitioner and give him a chance to uh, uh, make a final comment. I don't see anyone else in the audience raising their hand, the raise hand button. So we'll go to Mr. Pastor and uh, just give you one last uh, shot as we always do. Uh, thank you. Just again, if there's any other questions I can offer, uh, any questions, remember we're still in the beginning stages of this. Um, this is whether it gets rezoned to from OS to C2, that's how we're talking about tonight. Um, I understand that some people um, in any petition, it's actually brought up before the commission and the, the council and stuff. Nobody likes fast food restaurants. Nobody likes changes. I get that. Um, but this would be, um, this does fit there. The zoning is uh, proper being right next to C2. Um, I know that I would like to get this done or postponed if I could. If I could, I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, but the, right now, the guy gave me a 30-day extension. That's where I'm at. So, unfortunately, and if I could meet with each one of the, um, <laughs> with the planning commissioners, I would. But, you know, we can't do that even, you know, to go over some of their concerns and stuff. Traffic is always going to be there, whether this is going to be there or not. The accidents will probably always be there. Remember, this is not on six miles. The accidents that they're talking about, especially from the high school, is coming off a six mile. Yes, there's always accidents at five mile, six mile, seven mile. There's accidents out of my street off a of seven mile. So I get that. Um, the businesses get that. Um, the people are already using this already, turning left. As a matter of fact, they have two left turns out of that property and two right turns out of there. Where this would then control it in going in from one in and one out. So you're actually going to control our traffic um, a lot better going into the site than what it is than what is there now. I appreciate the time. This is unprecedented times. It's weird times, but I would appreciate um, at least to you know go forward with the council so that we can start working on some site plans to um, address most of the concerns of the citizens and the planning commission. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pastor. Uh, is there any other comments or questions for our petitioner from the commission? I want to make sure everyone has a chance to speak. I don't see anyone uh, wish, wishing to speak to the petitioner. So with that, I will, uh, Mr. Pastor, I'm going to put you back in our audience. Thank you for attending. And I'm going to go to our commission and ask if there's a motion. The motion will be in order at this point. Uh, Mr. Chair. Mrs. Smiley. I'm going to make a denying resolution uh, that the request to rezone the property at 16975 to 16991 Farmington Road from OS Office Services to C2 General Business is hereby denied for the following reasons. Uh, that the petitioner has failed to affirmatively show that the proposed change of zoning and the intended use of the property as a fast food restaurant would be compatible to and in harmony with the surrounding uses in the area, particularly with the respect to the adjacent residential neighborhood. That the proposed zoning and intended use of the property and its relation to streets giving access to it, particularly with the respect to the vehicular turning movements and routes of the traffic flow would be hazardous and inconvenient to the intersection and the neighborhood and would unduly conflict with the normal traffic flow and circulation patterns in the area. That the proposed zoning and use is contrary to the purposes, goals, and objectives of the zoning ordinance, which seek to ensure compatibility and appropriateness of uses so as to enhance property values and to create and promote a more favorable environment for the neighborhood use and enjoyment. That the petitioner has failed to sufficiently demonstrate that the site has the capacity to accommodate the proposed use and that the proposal fails to conclusively deal with all the concerns deemed necessary for the safety and welfare of the city and its residents. Okay, do we have support for that motion? Support. 
I'll support the chairman. All right. I heard Mrs. McHugh first, so I have a motion by Mrs. Smiley, supported by Mrs. McHugh, uh, recommending a denial of this rezoning from OS to C2. Is there any comments on the motion? Hearing no comments, if the secretary is ready, please call the roll on the motion to deny. Mrs. Smiley. Aye. Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mr. Bongiro. Aye. Mr. Long. Aye. Mr. Ventura. Aye. Chair Magno votes no. Chair Wilshaw. Votes aye. Motion passes. And uh, this motion, which is a recommendation, will go on to City Council. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mr. Tormi, that's correct? That is correct. So this will go on to City Council with a recommendation from the Commission to deny. Uh, thank you all to uh, both our petitioner and to our audience members uh, for uh, speaking on this item tonight. And uh, please continue to follow this as it moves on to City Council with that recommendation. Uh, if there is nothing else on this item, we will move on to item number two on our agenda. And that is, peti that is petition 2020-02-01-02 submitted by Bellagio Homes uh, pursuant to section 23.01 of the City of Livonian Ordinance number 543 as amended, requesting to rezone the northern 300.62 feet of the property at 316707 Mile Road located on the north side of Seven Mile Road between Merriman Road and Osmus Avenue in the southeast corner of Section 3 for Rural Urban Farm, minimum half acre uh, to R1, one family residential, 60 foot by 120 foot lots. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. We'll go to uh, Mr. Toramina, who is trying to get this full screen for us. Yes, and I, uh, I uh, Apologize for some reason the screen share is not working. Let me see if I can get this. It seems to be keep going back to the old one. Uh, let me make the uh, the presentation, to the chairman, and then uh, I'll see if I can uh, get that to work appropriately. Uh, this is a rezoning uh, petition that involves a portion of a property on Seven Mile Road. Uh, it's between Canterbury Street and Shrewsbury Street and it's located about 600 feet west of Merriman Road. Uh, the request is to rezone the north 300 feet of the property from RUF Rural Urban Farm to R1, one family residential. Um, a comparison between the two zoning districts, the RUF requires a minimum lot size of one half acre or 21,780 square feet, whereas the R1 zone allows for a minimum lot size of 7,200 square feet. Uh, the overall parcel measures roughly 2.3 acres. It has uh, 123 feet of road frontage by a depth of 880 feet. Uh, the parcel does contain a single family home that's located on the south half of the property. Uh, and this is the portion of, that would not be affected by the rezoning. Uh, this res residential structure uh, would remain. Um, a note, uh, the former owners of this property did once uh, operate a dog kennel uh, the kennel structures, which uh, previously existed on the north portion of the property, have been removed. So located at the uh, north end of the property, abutting both the east and west sides is Bridge Street. Uh, Bridge Street serves the two adjoining site condominium projects. Uh, this includes Livonia Manor 1, which is on the uh, east side, and then Livonia Manor 2, which is on the west side. Bridge Street is not presently a through street. It dead ends on both sides of the subject property. Uh, this leaves a gap equal to the width of the property, which as I indicated is about 123 feet. Uh, the streets were planned and designed to align in a way that would allow for the eventual connection between the two developments, Livonia Manor 1 and Livonia Manor 2. Uh, the park being rezoned measures roughly 37,126 square feet. Uh, which is about eight tenths of an acre. It has, it measures 123 and a half feet by 300.62 feet. And if the zoning change is approved, the petitioner intends to submit a site plan that would connect Bridge, Bridge Street and develop a four unit single family site condominium project. Uh, two units would be located on the south side of the extended street uh, and two, street, the two uh, units would be located on the north side 
all four lots would meet the minimum lot size requirement of the R1 district. Uh, the proposed, uh, or excuse me, the future land use plan shows the subject site as low density residential. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I can read out the uh, correspondence. Uh, first is a letter dated uh, February 25th. It's from our engineering division and it reads, in accordance with your request, the engineering division has the above reference petition. We have no objections to the proposed rezoning at this time. The legal description submitted by the owner appears to be correct and should be used for the rezone parcel should the request be approved. The parcel is assigned the address of 316707 Mile Road. The proposed development is currently serviced by public water main, sanitary, and storm sewers, which will need to be extended to service any new residences. The submitted drawing does not indicate any utility connection, so we do not have any knowledge of impacts to the existing systems at this time. The owner has been in contact with this office regarding the project and is aware of the engineering department's requirements. It should be noted that should the project move forward, the proposed construction will be required to meet the minimum or the Wayne County stormwater ordinance, including detention requirements and permits may be needed from the Wayne County Department of Public Services for any work within the seven mile road right of way. A full review of the proposed development will be completed when plans are submitted for permitting. That letter is signed by David Lear, Assistant City Engineer. Next is a letter dated uh, February 26 from our Department of Finance. It reads, I have reviewed the address uh, connected with the above noted uh, petition. The following amounts are due by the city to the city of Livonia, unpaid water and sewer charges in the amount of $145.23. Uh, that letter is uh, signed by Connie, Com Connie Compula, Chief Accountant. Next is a letter uh, from the Office of the Treasurer dated February 24th, uh, indicating that they have uh, no uh, objections to the proposal as there are no taxes due. Uh, that letter is signed by Linda Shield, Treasurer of the City. Uh, next are letters from residents. Uh, again, these are uh, email correspondence that uh, we received. The first is dated April 13th, and it's from Lisa and David Mobus, who give their address as 19142 Shrewsbury. Questions, concerns, vote against. What will be done, allowed, or requirements of the existing trees that are on the lots being built that back to Shrewsbury Drive side? A, we want builder to cut overhanging tree limbs back that hang in 19142 Shrewsbury Yard, also clean up existing brush and dead trees. Two, what will be done or allowed on the existing chain link fencing? A, we want the builder to install six foot white fencing to protect our privacy for 19142 and 19146 Shrewsbury Drive. We selected this location based on privacy and not having active homes behind us. B, the current fence is an eyesore. It is bent and rusted. Three, will new homes be part of LM1 or two or no association? A, my understanding is that Livonia Manor 1 no longer has an association or dues. B, if not in the HOA, what limits or restrictions will there be for sheds, playscapes, and other structures? Livonia Manor 2 is unable to have those and would not be right for new homes to have, and we don't want to look at them. Four, will any of the four homes be on the Livonia Manor 2 basin? If yes, they need to pay dues to Livonia Manor 2. Five, how will mailboxes work? They're not, they're not allowed mailboxes in front of homes as Livonia Manor 2 was not allowed that. A, I believe there are only a couple open slots so the builder or new owners would need to cover cost of slab and new mail unit. Six, will any new street lighting be required and who is responsible for paying the cost of the lighting? B, or excuse me, A, concern over lights shining in our windows. B. This concern also holds true for exterior lights on the new homes shining in our windows. Seven, will any new stop signs be installed or required? Eight, what will the hours of construction slash building? Nine, we are against the addition of new homes that will add more traffic and noise to this quiet area, the dead end street, and no homes directly behind us was a purchase decision. Next, we have a letter from Henry Morelli. Um, Henry and Amy Morelli, uh, dated April 11th, and it reads, we live at 19146 Shrewsbury. We are aware the property will be approved for development. We have several concerns which we want addressed before the city authorizes the development. 
Livonia Manor 1 and Livonia Manor 2 are two separate condo associations. We each have different expenses and, and Manor 1 has greater expenses with landscaping and signage. Can we keep these two associations separate? If we are forced to combine, who is going to pay for the new amendments to the bylaws? Two, we just paid for a new community mailbox. There are not four spaces available. We should not be required to pay for a larger mailbox. Three, the lack of street lighting should be addressed. I think one or two additional lights should be installed on new lots. Four, our property backyard will be the new side yard of the homes. There are trees which are encroaching and some falling on our property, which I have requested for the past five years to be removed. I also complained about the fencing, which was falling down, and the remedy was to remove one quarter of the fence, which they cut the post level to the ground, and it looks awful. I want the fence to be completely removed on my property or a new fence installed. Also, we have new sod. Any damage due to construction needs to be repaired before completed CFO is issued. Next item is from a Rachel Bazina um, that reads, excuse me, a Rachel Kurinen, and it reads, hello, I am writing to go against the petition 2020-02-01-02 submitted by Bellagio Homes Incorporated. By building more housing and removing trees is only reducing the legitimacy of Tree City. Since Livonia identifies themselves as Tree City USA, this is only diminishing the legacy. The first thing community tree ordinance in Livonia focuses on is protection, which is decreasing by moving forward with this. It is now time to save and embrace nature and the living things that live in it. Not too long ago, a bald eagle was spotted. We are losing potential opportunities for observing nature at its finest. Construction traffic and neighboring foundations are also a major concern with this future construction, as well as existing fences being damaged and pushed to the side. House, patio, and landscaping foundations will be compromised with the amount of heavy and abrupt construction. The traffic will impose on our children playing, space in our streets, blocking driveways, the amount of noise, and the chaotic traffic with heavy machinery. The problematic association logistics that will have to occur once four more houses are added will be very problematic. The adding of more mailboxes, the purchase of mailboxes, and the higher association costs of adding multiple more houses to take care of another subdivision. Sincerely a sad neighbor. Again, that's from Rachel Perrin. Uh, next is an email uh, from Eric uh, Weiber, uh, dated April 14th, that reads, as a concerned neighbor at 19134 Shrewsbury Drive, I am adamantly against the allowance of additional houses or condos at the property for the following reasons. One, currently there are were two homeowner associations, one for Livonia Manor and the other at Livonia Manor 2. These associations have different association guidelines and dues. By connecting the street, Livonia would be effectively merging the two very different associations. Without extreme mediation, these two very different associations would not resolve their differences. Different dues, mail delivery, landscaping, fences, lighting, house designs, just to name a few. Number two, many of the even addresses, homes on Shrewsbury Drive, pick these houses due to their relative seclusion in a very busy city of Livonia. By adding more houses, and connecting the streets, you are forcing our loss of this quiet and seclusion. Three, many of the residents of Shrewsbury Drive chose their home on a dead end street to allow their children the ability to play without fear of on, on rushing traffic. By connecting the two streets, Livonia would be removing this natural barrier and allowing additional traffic. For the above reason, reasons, I implore you to vote against the 2020-02-0102 petition. Thank you. And lastly, we have an email uh, from Joe Pernan, uh, dated April 14th, that reads, Hi, as a concerned neighbor at 31580 Bridge Street, I am extremely against the allowance of additional houses at the property for the following reasons. One, my final decision to purchase my home was due to the fact that it was at the dead end. My concern is with the constant construction and abrupt, uh, abruption on my brand new concrete patio, my whole house, and landscaping foundation will be greatly disturbed or predominantly damaged. Who should pay for this? I have already seen a preview of this with the constant trucks parked at the front of my house and the construction work build on the garage shed that was built on the current property. Also, what will happen to the fence that is currently there? Will my property line be respected? 
Number two, the merge of two associations. Who do these houses belong to? The two very different associations dues and guidelines will only cause more confusion to our quiet street and the community. We have worked hard and taken pride in our little street and this will only bring more problems. Once again, I hope you vote against the 2020-02-01-02 petition. Thank you, Joe Prierman. And that is the extent of the correspondence, Mr. Chairman. And let me see if I can get the graphics working. Mr. Toromino, while you do that, I just want to note uh, there was one additional comment we received through our chat uh, from Daryl and Lori Zonica at uh, 19138 Shrewsbury Drive. Uh, they state that their concerns are the dead trees in the back of their yard. We would like to require that a vinyl privacy fence, uh, if this passes at the current, as the current fence is falling apart, as our neighbor's mailboxes and association dues are a concern, there are young families and traffic concerns. We did not agree with this proposal and ask that you vote against it. So I want to make sure that that's also noted for our record. Uh, if you are able to get the uh, plans on our screen uh, to show people, that would be great. If not, uh, we can work with what's in our packet. Uh, I also do want to ask if the petitioner is here tonight or the representative if they are to please click their raise hand button and uh, we can <coughs> recognize you i see uh mr suave thank you There you go. We well, got it, Mark. Uh, that's working now, right? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mrs. Smiley. Uh, I have a question for uh, Mr. Tarvino. Yeah, that would be appropriate. Okay. Did we, did, originally they intended to put Bridge Street to go all the way through, did they not? Yeah, so uh, the the subdivisions were designed uh, to ultimately form that connection uh, through Bridge Street. I think if you go back and you take a look at uh, the record uh, or uh, the site plans of, of, of both of these, um, it, it was with the intention of, uh, of connecting the two streets. Uh, we normally don't uh, have stub streets uh, terminate like that at the, uh, the edge of a property. Uh, without their, without the intent being to extend the street uh, sometime in the future. And in this particular case, you can see the obvious uh, design intention was to, to link the streets. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tormino. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Smiley. Mr. Tormino, is there uh, any other information you want to present or we'll look to see if there's any questions for you? No. Um, this is the aerial photograph, uh, obviously, uh, showing the area that is the subject of the rezoning petition that's highlighted in yellow. And then uh, looking at the, uh, the next graphic, uh, this is the survey which provides um, the dimensional information of, of that uh, area. Uh, you'll, you'll note the proposed zoning to R1 and the hatched area. Uh, that's the area affected by this uh, petition. The balance of the site would remain uh, zoned RUF. Okay, thank you. And of course, as we uh, always want to point out, uh, we are looking at, again, like our first petition, at a rezoning request tonight uh, to rezone this property from RUF to R1. Uh, there will be probably some discussion about the intended use of the property and what's going to be put on it, but uh, but we're not going to dive too deep into the details of um, the actual site plan because we're looking at zoning tonight. Uh, if there's any, is there any other questions from the commission for Mr. Tormina? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Long. Thank you. Um, Mr. Tormina, just, uh, I guess, probably just a clerical thing, but looking at the resolutions, um, it, I, I think we have uh, the wrong address here, and I just want to make sure that we have the proper resolution in front of us. 
Um, yeah. I will take a look at that uh, um, and see if we can't make that correction. Uh, I mean, uh, so. Obviously, if it's just an address, it's no big deal. We can just, you know, gloss over it. Just want to make sure all the rest of the language is proper. I will look into that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Schilling. That's a good observation. I see that as well. Uh, any other questions for our planning director? I don't hear any other questions or see any. Uh, so Mr. Sove, Mr. Suave, I believe is uh, joined to our meeting and he just needs to unmute himself and then he can introduce himself and uh, talk about his petition. Again, to unmute, you uh, can do that through the controls on Zoom, or I believe you can dial star nine if you're connected by telephone. Mr. Suave, I think we're unmuted. Great call. Mr. Suave, we cannot hear you. However, we do see that you are unmuted. Is there anyone else uh, in our audience that's uh, representing the petitioner tonight? If so, uh, please use the raise hand button. Uh, Mr. Baki. Hello. Hi, Sam. Hi, how are you? Sam Baki, 31670 Seven Mile Road. I'm, uh, I got on just in case Mr. Salve cannot uh, get on. Apparently he can't. As uh, Mr. Termita mentioned, uh, those both developments on east and west of that property was designed for that street to connect with uh, with the lots to match, which is the R1 zoning to match the zoning on east and west of that property. Uh, I know some, I see, I heard some of the concerns. The dead tree is gonna be cleaned once the, uh, the petition goes through and the uh, site plan approved for the four lots two north of that ex extension of that street and two south of it when uh, the tree company comes in all these will be cleaned and you know all the uh dead trees will be removed uh at this time it wasn't you know sufficient time or to get to access to it so that will be done uh, after the petition is approved with respect to fencing the fencing will be repaired the metal fencing for the existing are you up property will be fully repaired the other fencing facing on the new developments definitely has got to come down and with a brand new fencing in the back of that new development will be backing into the RUF to install any other fencing for neighbors. We're not doing that, but we are repairing all these chain link fence, the existing as we speak after we remove all the dead trees and uh, whatever is, you know, damaged those fence. This property, I don't know if anybody's aware of, but this property, the reason was never developed at the beginning because the original owner didn't want to sell that in the last, uh, you know, about, uh, the last few months, uh, the property went for, for a sale. And, uh, Mr. Sove, Bellagio Homes acquired it. And that's what we're proceeding with the cleanup and the repairs right now and whatever we need to do to, you know, to do this development. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Baki. Uh, there is one other person in the audience uh, has their hand raised. Mr. Sove, are you with us? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I was having trouble trying to unmute my microphone, but apparently uh, my first time using Zoom, so I'm new at this, so please bear with me. You're doing fine. So. I had to log off and log back on, so I think I caught most of what my uh, 
my proxy Sam Baki uh, informed you guys with. Um, uh, Mark had it accurate that when we developed both Livonia Manor 1 and Livonia Manor 2, it was always planned infrastructures there to connect these two streets. Um, I personally lived there on Bridge Street right next to the uh, dog kennel for seven years until we moved out about four years ago. So I'm very well uh, what goes on over there. Um, also, the master plan for R1. So I think this is a benefit uh, to the community as a whole. Uh, once the utilities are connected, uh, water pressure should increase and water uh, quality should increase too with the looping of the water main between the two communities. Um, also, this will be a standalone site condominium. So there's going to be no burdens to either Livonia Manor 1 or Livonia Manor 2. So that should not be a worry to any of the neighbors, especially in Livonia Manor 2. All right, thank you, Mr. Suave. I think you've answered a number of questions that have already been asked, uh, but I'm sure we're going to have some more. Is there any questions for our petitioner from the commission? Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Ventura? Uh, Mr. Suave, um, <clears throat> I know this is not a site plan review, but can you, can you assure us that the structures that you have built on these four lots are consistent in character and size with that which is already there in uh, one and two? Absolutely. It'll be exactly the same. They'll actually comport, the building restrictions will comport to the uh, current building restrictions that um, actually we drafted for both Livonia Manor 1 and Livonia Manor 2. So there'll be a mixture of ranches and colonials there with um, comparable square footages and uh, same building uh, components. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sobey. Thank you, Mr. Wilshire. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ventura. Any other questions for our petitioner from the commission? If there's no other questions from the commission, I don't hear any others. Uh, we do have some members of our audience uh, who have their hand raised who would like to speak as well. So if uh, Mr. Baki and Mr. Sove, you can just uh, stand by for a moment. Uh, we're going to let you uh, just stand by for a second. We're going to go to some of our audience members and give them an opportunity to speak to the commission and give their uh, uh, comments for or against. Uh, the first person does not have a name. They have a phone number uh, listed here. So I'm going to go to them and they can unmute themselves and introduce the, themselves by name and address. Hello? Yes, we hear you. Uh, yeah, my name is David Mobus. I'm at 19142 Shrewsbury. Uh, you had read a document from my wife earlier on uh, email. Um, as far as the street going all the way through, that was we were we asked that when we purchased this lot to be built, and we were told at the time that it would not be going through. In fact, they put up a railing um, at the end of the street um, so that it wouldn't go through. Um, so we were kind of confused at that point. Uh, second, if it's going to be a standalone condominium association, where are their mailboxes going to be? They can't go in front of their homes anymore. It's not allowed. And second, if it's a standalone association, what bylaws are they going to have? Are they going to have the a man or two type of bylaws? They can't put sheds, playscapes, stuff like that. That's I'm looking out my window right now where their yard would be, and I'd be looking at that stuff that they don't want to see. That's why we bought this lot is because of the wooded area behind us. And, you know, another concern is with the fencing. If this does go through, and I know this is a zoning, this has nothing to do with that, but for them to say that they will not cover us of putting a uh, privacy fence up for us who have been here for a while, it's, they've already set precedent with doing it with the house, the very first house they built off of Seven Mile. He, he was told that there wasn't going to be a house built next to him. They built a house, and they paid for his privacy funds. I see. So I guess I'm kind of confused on, on what they're saying. They're, you know, they're saying one thing and doing another. 
And the only reason the building, the, the dog kennel is torn down now is because they wanted, you know, they wanted a dog to get a head start on, on putting these houses in. They tore that down a month and a half ago, two months ago. So I guess I'm kind of confused here as far as, or are they trying to get a head start on all this? You know, and again, it, it, what was brought up by uh, Rachel, um, construction traffic. I don't want to see it. You know, we don't have kids, but there's a lot of little kids in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You want construction trucks driving through your neighborhood when you got little kids playing in the neighborhood? I don't. I mean, that's just some of the neighbors' concerns. You know, we, we bought these houses based on having property behind us, and I'm sure the Livonia Manor one houses, they back to that lot, thought the same thing. So that's just some of our concerns. I hope you guys do the right thing and, you know, and realistically don't allow it. Okay, well, we appreciate, so we appreciate your comments. Uh, we will uh, ask some of those questions of our petitioner uh, that you uh, addressed. We'll, we'll go back to him after hearing from the rest of the audience and uh, see if he can address some of those issues. Uh, but okay, we, well, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll let you continue listening. And uh, we do have another person in the audience. Uh, uh, is there anyone else in the audience? I don't see anyone else with their hand raised. Uh, anyone else in the audience wishing to speak for or against this? I see a number of the, pe number of the uh, members of the audience are people who had already emailed us, and we read those comments already. So uh, we do want to thank them for sending their comments in advance. And... I don't see anyone else in the audience raising their hand, so we will go back to the petitioner. Uh, Mr. Suave, if you want to address uh, anything that's been raised at this point. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, in regards to the uh, condominium uh, documents, bylaws, master deed, et cetera, I think I previously stated that we were going to use the same bylaws uh, for Livonia Manor 1 and Livonia Manor 2. So you'll have a lot of uh, similarities and be congruent to the adjacent communities. So the, uh, there will be no changes and no surprises there. Um, we just purchased a property less than a year ago, maybe October of last year. So there is no guarantees that the property is going to come up for sale, but it did. We purchased it, and we're going to complete the we're going to complete the project as originally planned, you know, many years ago. So there is no misrepresentations there. Um, as far as mailboxes, uh, that issue right now is not before us. Uh, keep in mind, Livonia Mayor One, there is no cluster of mailboxes. Every unit, every unit owner has a mailbox at the curb, so that has not been determined at this time. It's too premature. Okay, and so any other any other questions, I would uh, love to entertain, Mr. Chair. Okay, so you haven't decided yet at this point if you're going to do a clustered mailbox for these four units or or just do individual ones. <sighs> Um, me being a simple man, the easiest thing would be each house would have a mailbox at the curb just to reflect Livonia Manor too. Um, I can't imagine the Postmaster General one uh, for a unit cluster box uh, at the corner. Okay, and that's that's something that we can address at the site plan. Process. Well, that's something the city of Livonia has no, uh, has no jurisdiction over. That's all dictated by the Postmaster General for Livonia. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Su Suave, is there any other comments or questions from the commission uh, for our petitioner? I don't see any other comments or questions. Mr. So, Chair, do you want my address for the record? I don't believe I had an opportunity yeah. to state that. Yes, please. Uh, three seven 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 one seven mile road, uh, Livonia four eight one five two Enrico Suave. Very good, thank you. I'm sure our uh, secretary will appreciate the, that being uh, added to our record. So thank you. You're welcome. And uh, if there's no other questions or comments for our petitioner, then I will close the public hearing, and a motion would be in order. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ventura, I'd like to offer an approving resolution. 
And I'm going to uh, substitute the address that was pointed out uh, by Mr. Long. So, <clears throat> number one, that the proposed change of zoning, I'm sorry, that the request to rezone the property at 31677 Mile Road from RUF to R1 is hereby approved, subject to city council approval for the following reasons. Number one, that the proposed change of zoning is compatible to and in harmony with the surrounding land uses and zoning districts in the area. Number two, that the proposed change of zoning is consistent with the developing character of the area. Number three, that the R1 zoning would provide for the development of the subject property in a manner that is consistent with its size and location. Number four, the zoning change would warrant the extension of Bridge Street through property, forming a connection and enable the development of a four single family site condominium project that would meet the minimum lot width and area requirements of the R1 district. And number five, that the proposed change of zoning is supported by the future land use plan, which recommends low density residential use in this area. Okay, is there support for that motion? Support. All right, I have a motion to approve a rezoning request from Mr. Ventura, supported by Mr. Bongero. Is there any discussion on the motion? If there's no discussion, then the secretary is ready. Please call the roll. Uh, Mr. Ventura. Aye. Mr. Bongero. Aye. Mrs. Smiley. Aye. Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mr. Long. Aye. Chair Magno votes aye. Chair Mosha. Votes aye. Motion passes. <coughs> City Council with an approving recommendation and Mr. Uh, Suave, we will see you back for the site plan on this petition. Thank you guys. Have a pleasant evening. Be safe. Thank you. You be safe as well. Thank you. Thanks. And with that, uh, we are now finished with item number two on our agenda. We can go on to item number three. Number three is 2020-01-02-01 submitted by Wade Shows. Um, requesting waiver use approval uh, pursuant to section 11.03 I of the city of Livonia zoning ordinance number 543 is amended to conduct a carnival in the parking lot of Sears sponsored by the Rotary Club of Livonia uh, consisting of amusement rides, games and food concessions from May 14, 2020 uh, through May 25, 2020 inclusive on the property at 29,507 mile road located on the northwest corner of Seven Mile Road and Middlebelt Road in the southeast quarter of Section 2. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Toromina, I believe this uh, petitioner is requested to uh, withdraw the petition. Is that correct? That is correct. For obvious reasons, uh, the carnival uh, will not be held uh, this uh, next month, and uh, they are therefore requesting that uh, the item be withdrawn. Okay, I believe since they're requesting withdrawal of this uh, petition and there's really no need to uh, uh, discuss this further uh, by action of the chair, if you could, if we could, uh, and if there's no objection from any of the commissioners, we'll uh, uh, take no further action on this petition. I don't hear any objections, so if the secretary can just note that we'll take no further action on this petition because it was a request <clears throat> drawn by the petitioner. And that will take us on to item number four on our agenda. And item four is petition 2020-03-02-02, submitted by Unleashed Pet Care Real Estate LLC, requesting waiver use approval pursuant to section 10.03F of the City of Lavonia Zoning Ordinance, number 543 is amended, to operate a veterinary clinic at 9300 uh, Middlebell Road, located on the east side of Middlebell Road between Joy and West Chicago in the southwest corner of Section 36. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Tormino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a request for waiver use approval to operate a veterinary clinic that will be called Unleashed Pet Care. Uh, this is the site of the former Tarowski Funeral Home, which is located on the east side of Middle Belt. It's one block south of West Chicago Avenue, and it's between Minton and Hathaway Avenues. Uh, the site is about three quarters of an acre in size. 
It has 230 feet of frontage on Middle Belt Road and uh, 140 feet of frontage on Hathaway. Uh, the total gross floor area of the building is about 4,750 square feet. As you can see from um, the aerial photograph here, uh, the general position of the building on the property is on the north half with parking available on the north, east, and south sides. The only uh, appreciable <coughs> amount of landscaping on the property is located between the building and Middle Belt Road. The subject property is in the process of being rezoned from OS Office Services to C1 Local Business in order to facilitate this waiver use request. Uh, the first reading on the rezoning was given by City Council on February 12th. Second reading and roll call, which are the final steps in the rezoning process, are on hold pending a review of the site plan. Uh, the following review is based on the C1 district regulations. Lying to the north and to the south of the property, uh, fronting on Middle Belt Road are, se are several offices zoned OS Office Services. Immediately to the east are one family residential homes that are part of the Pearl Wilson subdivision. And uh, on the west side of Middle Belt are two family homes zoned R6, as well as some office uses zoned OS. Uh, the proposed veterinary clinic uh, would occupy the entire building. Uh, this is going to require extensive uh, remodeling. A uh, submitted floor plan shows the interior layout of the clinic, uh, which includes several exam rooms, as well as a reception area, waiting room, surgery, dog wash, x-ray, receiving and storage, and several other support rooms. Uh, there's an existing garage, as you can note, on the, uh, in the southeast corner of the building. Uh, no changes are proposed to the exterior of the building. Uh, the site uh, presently contains a total of 54 parking spaces. Required parking for vet clinic is based on a ratio of one space for every 150 square feet of usable floor area. Applying this standard yields a total requirement for 22 parking spaces. Uh, the site plan that you see here is, um, provides for 30 off-street parking spaces, so it does comply. Uh, 24 spaces, which are along the north and the portions of the east sides of the property, would be removed in order to provide additional green space. A new grassy area is shown along the north side of the property adjacent to Hathaway. Uh, you'll recall from our study meeting that a fence was proposed originally around this uh, lawn area, uh, but that fence has been removed from the plan. This is the most recent plan. There are three driveways uh, that currently exist along Middle Belt Road. Uh, the revised site plan, again, this was another issue we discussed at the study meeting. Uh, the plan shows the elimination of the northerly driveway. Um, screen trash enclosure is shown on the east side of the property. Details are provided showing the masonry walls as well as a masonry grate. Gate, excuse me. Um, I'll just scroll through these graphics quickly. Uh, this is what the building looks like presently. This would be the south side of the building. Excuse me, this is the south side of the building. And then the east and west sides of the elevation. Uh, these are the details uh, for the dumpster in, uh, enclosure. Um, under the sign regulations for C1 districts, uh, the proposed vet clinic would be, allowed, would be allowed one wall sign, not to exceed one square foot for each one foot of building frontage. Uh, no wall sign is shown on the plans. Uh, it is the petitioner's intention to reface the existing monument sign, which is located in front of the building uh, on Middle Belt Road. And you can, I think one of the photographs shows the, uh, the location of that, uh, of that sign. It's right here. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll be happy to read out the correspondence on this item. So first letter is uh, from our Department of Public Works, uh, the Engineering Division, and it reads, in accordance with your request, the Engineering Division has reviewed the above reference petition. We have no objections to the proposed waiver use at this time. The existing parcel is assigned the address of 9300 Middle Belt Road. The existing parcel is currently serviced by public water main, sanitary sewer, and storm sewer. The information submitted does not show proposed alterations for the utility services, so it does not appear that there will be any impacts to the existing systems. It should be noted that should the developer need to do any work within this uh, road right of way, permits will be needed from the Wayne County Department of Public Services. Um, should you have any additional questions on this matter, please feel free to contact David Lear, the assistant city engineer. Uh, next, we have a letter from our 
Department of Public Safety. That letter is dated uh, March 20th, uh, indicating that they have no objections to the proposal. That's signed by Scott Chapansky, Sergeant of the Traffic Bureau. Next, we have a similar letter of no objection coming from the Livonia Fire and Rescue, dated April 13th, and signed by Greg Thomas, Fire Marshal. Uh, we have a letter of no objection from our uh, Department of Finance, dated March 20th, and signed by Connie Kumpulik, Chief Accountant. A letter of no objection from the Office of Treasurer, dated April 7th, and signed by Linda Scheel, Treasurer of the City of Livonia. And with that, Mr. Chairman, that uh, concludes the uh, correspondence on this item. Thank you, Mr. Tarmia. Any questions for our planning director? If there's no questions, uh, the petitioner, I believe, is here. Hello? Hello, we hear you. Oh, look at that, the first one who could unmute. <laughs> <laughs> if you could just uh, start with your name and address for our record. Aaron Kapkowski, 21204 Pontiac Trail, number two. South Lyon, Michigan, 48178. Thank you very much, Ms. Kapkowski. Uh, anything else that you would like to add to this petition that uh, we haven't already heard from Mr. Tormina? I don't think so. Um, they, they really, uh, the client, when they took the property, they it's more parking than they needed. Um, I'm keeping the existing parking spots that are to the side. Those are all existing, as you can see. And then um, the grassy area, which we did want to fence in, but we understand that that's not uh, approvable. The grassy area is just for, um, you know, dogs that they need to walk um, that are rehabbing there. And we thought that the grassy area, a little bit of grassy area on the other side might be more palatable to the neighborhood than just all that concrete parking. Sure, understandable. And then the ones in the back that I put in there for parking are just like employee parking. Okay, great. Uh, is there any questions for our uh, petitioner's representative tonight? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Long. Thank you. Um, so it's my understanding uh, that uh, you're, you're going to try and work with the county in order to close the uh, uh, the, the driveway to nowhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, area. yeah. Your um, your planner recommended that I get approval from you and then uh, work with um, Wayne County to do that. That there that there was another uh, case similar to that in your city that went very smooth, done that way. Um, okay. You know we don't want to overly involve with Wayne County, but it, it seems like it's not going to be that big of a problem. And it would look kind of silly to have the driveway there if it's all grass. Sure. And this would be good. You still have two driveways, right? Um, exactly. Yeah. And uh, they, yeah. they would go in a circle, like people could come in one way, go out the other way. Um, and then the one driveway is easy for the dumpster to be picked up. Perfect. Yeah, I can see that on the, the site plan. So, okay, I'm, I'm in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Any other commissioners wishing to ask a question? No other questions from the commission. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this? If you are, please click the raise hand button to get our attention. And we'll give you a chance to speak. We'll just pause for one moment. I don't see anybody raising their hand at this point, but I'll give people just one second to do that. Seeing that there's no one in the audience wishing to speak on this item, uh, we always go back to our petitioner to give them the last word. Ms. Uh, Kopkowski, is there anything else that you would like to add before we make our decision? I think I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, attending tonight. And if you'll just stand by for one second, I'll go back to our commission and ask uh, if there is a motion. Mr. Chair. Mrs. McHugh. I'd like to offer an approving resolution that this request to operate a veterinary clinic at 9300 Middlebelt Road shall be approved subject to the following conditions. 
that the site plan submitted to uh, by Unleashed Pet Care is hereby approved and shall be adhered to, that the parking lot shall be repaired, resealed, and restriped as necessary to the satisfaction of the inspection department. Parking spaces shall be double striped at 10 feet wide by 20 feet in length. That all light fixtures shall not exceed 20, 20 feet in height and shall be shielded to minimize glare trespassing on adjacent properties and roadways. That the operation of the subject use shall not include overnight boarding or care of animals. That all animal remains, medical and animal waste shall be properly disposed of. That adequate soundproofing shall be installed to the extent necessary to ensure the elimination of all noise from the building. That the use of an open or outdoor runway, kennels or pens are prohibited. That three walls of the trash dumpster shall be constructed out of de decorative masonry units or a poured wall with textures and colors to match that of the building. The enclosure gate shall be of solid panel steel construction or durable long lasting solid panel fiberglass. The trash dumpster shall the trash dumpster area shall always be maintained when not in, and when not in use closed. That only conforming signage is approved with this petition and any additional signage shall be separately submitted for review and, and approval by the Zoning Board of Appeals. That no LED light board or exposed neon shall be permitted on this site, including but not limited to the building or around the windows. That specific plans referenced in this approving resolution shall be submitted to the inspection department the time of the building permits are applied for and pursuant to section 19.10 of ordinance number 543, the zoning ordinance of the city of Livonia, this approval is valid for a period of one year only from, from the date of approval by city council. And unless a building permit is obtained, this approval shall be null and void at the expiration of said period. Thank you, Ms. McHugh. Is there support? Support. Support by Mr. Long. We have a motion to approve by Mrs. McHugh, supported by Mr. Long. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, if there's no discussion, if the secretary is ready, please call the roll. Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mr. Long. Aye. Mrs. Smiley. Aye. Mr. Bajero. Aye. Mr. Ventura. Aye. Chair Magda votes aye. Chairman Wilshaw. Votes aye. Motion passes. And we'll go on to City Council and approving recommendation. Uh, thank you for attending tonight, Ms. Kopkowski, and uh, good luck with your project. Thank you. And uh, can I get a copy of that motion with all the that she read? Yes. Uh, our planning department will get that to you with all the uh, criteria. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good night. You do the same. Be safe. <clears throat> If, the, uh, if there's nothing else on this item, if the secretary is ready, we'll move on to item number five. Which is petition 2000, zero, uh, struggle with these 2020s all night, 2020-02-03-01, submitted by Zymet, Wozniak and Associates on behalf of Jeff College, <clears throat> pursuant to council resolution 319-19 and section 12.08 of the Livonia Court of Ordinances, of the city of Livonia as amended to determine whether or not to vacate a section of the existing water main easement within the Schoolcraft College campus at 18,600 Haggerty Road and 17,950 College Parkway, located on the east side of Haggerty Road between six mile and seven mile roads in the northwest quarter of south and southwest quarter of section 14. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Tormina. Thank you. This request by Schoolcraft College seeks to vacate a portion of a water main easement that is no longer uh, needed. The college is in the process of building a sports center on its campus in partnership with St. Mary, uh, St. Joseph Mercy Health System. Uh, this is a 74,000 square foot facility. Um, it will be located next to the college's existing physical education building. Uh, construction commenced late last year, completion scheduled for later this year. Uh, because the location of the new sports center is located over a part of an existing water main easement, uh, that easement has been, re or that water main has been removed, and rerouted, and the section of easement uh, needs to be uh, vacated. Uh, no objections have been received by either the city engineering department or other public or private utilities with an interest in this matter. Um, we have two items of correspondence. Uh, our first is from the treasurer indicating that she has no objections as there are no taxes due. Uh, that letter is dated February 21st and signed by Linda Shield. 
And second uh, is a letter from our Department of Finance dated February 11th, also indicating that they have no objections as there are no outstanding amounts receivable, general or water and sewer. And that letter signed by Connie Kumpula, uh, Chief Accountant. And that is the extent of the correspondence, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tormina. Any questions for our planning staff? If not, our petitioner is here. I believe I have Mr. Wright and uh, Mr. War uh, uh, Julian Wargo. Yes. Okay, great. Um, you're welcome to introduce yourself, name and address, and then uh, if you want to add anything, you're welcome to. John, you're going to go first? Okay. Yeah, uh, this is John Wright. I'm the executive director of facilities at Schoolcraft College. Um, and we are here, I guess, just as sort of a house cleaning uh, type thing. Um, we have rerouted the water main. Um, to allow for the new sports center that is going in. And so this is to vacate uh, the, the old, uh, the, the uh, easement for the old uh, water main. And with that, um, Julian can give any other explanation or if you have questions, more than happy to answer. My name is uh, Julian Wargo. I'm with Zymet Wozniak and Associates. We're civil engineers uh, providing technical support to Schoolcraft College. Uh, our address is uh, 55800 Grand River Avenue, Suite 100, uh, New Hudson, Michigan. Uh, really nothing else to add, but available for questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you both for being here tonight and uh, sitting through this, uh, this long meeting. Uh, do we have any questions for our petitioners from any of the uh, commissioners? Uh, as you mentioned, this is a uh, fairly routine uh, housekeeping type item. Uh, I don't see any questions from any of our commissioners yet. So if there are no questions, uh, we will go look for a motion. A motion would be in order. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Long. I'd like to offer an approving resolution but the request to vacate a section of the existing water main easement within the Schoolcraft College campus at 18600 Haggerty Road and 17950 College Parkway is hereby approved, subject to City Council approval for the following reasons. Number one, that no objections have been received in connection with this request. Number two, that the vacating of the subject easement will remedy a potential encumbrance on the title. And number three, that the easement is no longer needed to serve the development as a new looped water main has already been installed in its place. Thank you, Mr. Long. Is there support? Support. All right, I have a motion to approve by Mr. Long, support by Mr. Bongero. Before I take the uh, roll call on that, I did neglect to see if there's anyone else in the audience wishing to speak uh, for or against this item. If there is anybody, please click the raise your hand button and we'll make sure that you're recognized. I don't see anybody else in the audience wishing to speak on this item. I just want to make sure we did that. Uh, if the secretary is ready, please call the roll on the motion to approve. Mr. Law. Aye. Mr. Bajero. Aye. Mrs. Smiley. Aye. Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mr. Ventura. Aye. Chair Magna votes aye. Chairman Wolshaw. Votes aye. And the motion is passed. Thank you, uh, gentlemen, for coming tonight. And uh, good luck with uh, getting that uh, taken care of. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Secretary, we can uh, now move on to item six. Petition 2020-02-03-02, submitted by Woodhaven Retirement Com Community, pursuant to Council Resolution number 61-20 and section 12.2. 08 of the Livonia Court of Ordinances of the City of Livonia is amended to determine whether or not to vacate a section of the existing water main easement 9667 Wentworth Avenue, located on the south side of Wentworth Avenue, west of Middleville Road, in the southeast corner of Section 14. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Tormina. Thank you. This uh, case is very similar to the previous one. It's a request to vacate an existing water main easement uh, within the Woodhaven Retirement Community, which is a continuing care facility located on the south side of Wentworth Avenue, about 700 feet west of uh, Middle Belt Road. So the site is divided into two main parts, Woodhaven uh, Skilled Nursing Center and Woodpoint Independent Living Apartments. 
Uh, Woodhaven encompass, encompasses the northern 3.7 acres of the site. It's zoned OS office services. There's a one-story uh, building that's about 55,000 square feet uh, in size uh, with a total of 91 beds, and that's this building located here. Wood Point, on the other hand, uh, occupies the adjoining property to the south. It's about 2.7 acres, zoned R9, housing for the elderly. This building is two stories in height and about 43,000 uh, square feet in size with 22 dwelling units. Collectively, the nursing center and the apartment building are known as Woodhaven Retirement Community. It was in 2016 when the city approved the expansion of Woodhaven's nursing and rehabilitation facilities. The, that expansion uh, necessitated the relocation of a fire hydrant that was uh, served by a public water main located within a dedicated uh, easement. It's that portion of the 20 foot wide easement extending for a length of about 125 feet that is being vacated. Uh, city engineering department has reviewed this. They have no objections to the request. Uh, the ordinance of vacating utility easement first requires a public hearing by the planning commission <laughs> recommendation that will be submitted to city council. A uh, notice of the petition has been provided to all known utility and communications companies with an interest in the property and no objections have been uh, received. We have two items of correspondence, both from the city. One is from our office of treasurer dated March 10th, indicating no objections, signed by Linda Shield, treasurer of the city. And secondly, one from our, uh, an, uh, an item from our Depart department of finance dated March 12th, uh, also indicating no objection and signed by Connie Cumpula, uh, chief accountant. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Taramina. Any questions for our planning director? I don't hear any. Is there anyone in the uh, audience, uh, petitioner, or anyone wishing to speak for or against this item? Please click the raise hand button. If you have a petitioner or anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this. And Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, Mr. Tormina. Yeah, th this is again, uh, it's a housekeeping uh, matter. It's something that uh, was uh, forwarded uh, uh, by our engineering department uh, to city council uh, to be addressed. Uh, so that's that's really the reason there's no uh, petitioner on this. It's it's really the uh, the city um, uh, submitting this on behalf of Woodhaven Retirement Community. Understandable. Thank you for that uh, that information. And uh, if there is no one wishing to speak, I'll close the public hearing on this item and. Look to the commission for a motion. Mr. Chair. Uh, who did I hear? Mr. Me. Montero? Yeah. Hey. I'd like to make a, an approving resolution that the request to vacate a section of the existing water main easement within the property at 29667 Wentworth Avenue is hereby approved for the following reasons. One, that the subject easement is no longer needed for public purposes. Two, that due to past improvements to the property, the existing water main easement needs to be abandoned and rerouted. Three, that the rerouting allows the placement of a fire hydrant in a more appropriate location, and this vacating conveys the fire hydrant's relocation. And four, no reporting city department or public utility has objected to the proposed vacating. Thank you, Mr. Bongero. Uh, is there support? Support. <laughs> I heard Mrs. McHugh first, so we'll go with a motion to approve by Mr. Bongero, supported by Mrs. McHugh. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yes. If not, if the secretary is ready, please call the roll. Mr. Bongero. Aye. Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mrs. Smiley. Aye. Mr. Long. Mr. Long is muted. Mr. Long uh, votes aye, sorry. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ventura. Aye. Chair Magna votes aye. Chair Walshaw? Votes aye. Motion passes. Uh, thank you for that. This will now take us to the end of the public hearing section of our agenda. And we move into the miscellaneous item section of our agenda, item number seven. And that is petition 2020-02-08-01, submitted by Ventura and Associates on behalf of Western Wayne Physicians, requesting approval of all plans Required by section 18.58 of the City of Livonia Zoning Ordinance number 543 as amended. Required regarding a proposal to construct an addition 
and remodel the front entrance of the existing building at 15160 LeVan Road, located on the east side of LeVan Road between Linden and Five Mile Road and the northeast corner of Section 20. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Tormina. Thank you. This site plan petition involves an existing medical office building that is located on the east side of LeVan, uh, south of Five Mile Road and across from St. Mary Mercy Hospital. Uh, this property is about four tenths of an acre in size. It has 110 feet of frontage, uh, road frontage by a depth of 165 feet. <clears throat> the site, as you can see barely, uh, has uh, two zoning classifications. The north 40 feet is zone C1, while the remaining southerly portion, which is where the existing office building is located, is zoned OS office services. Uh, the existing building is L-shaped. It's one story in height. It's about 2,220 square feet in size. And as you can see from the aerial photograph, it's positioned close to the property's south property line with parking located on the west, east, and north sides of the property. Two additions are proposed uh, to the uh, building. Uh, the larger of the, uh, of the two uh, measures about 590 square feet and is in the southwest corner of the, uh, of the building where it would effectively square off the building without encroaching any further into the west, uh, to the west or to the east than the existing building. Uh, the purpose of this addition is to increase the number of exam rooms. Uh, the second addition involves a new main entryway, which is in the northwest corner of the building. Uh, this new feature would project about 10 feet from the building, providing an enclosed airlock as well as a vestibule for persons entering the facility's reception and waiting area. Uh, this smaller addition is only about 53 square feet in area. Uh, upon completion, uh, the two additions would raise the total square footage of the building to about 2,866. Uh, the proposed additions do comply with all the height, area, and bulk requirements of the OS Office Services Zoning District. Uh, additional landscaping is shown along the foundation of the building as well as the north property line where an existing paved opening between this property and the office to the north would be removed. The parking layout and the other existing landscaped areas would all remain as they currently exist. Uh, the total amount of landscaping for the site uh, is about 20%. In terms of parking, uh, required parking for medical clinics is based on one space for every 110 square feet of usable floor area. A total of 21 parking spaces are needed to comply with the city's parking rules uh, this site plan provides a total of 23 parking spaces. In terms of the uh, exterior of the building, the outside of the uh, existing building contains a mostly face brick with a mansard roof along the north and west elevations. The exterior finish of the main addition in the southwest corner would consist of a synthetic stone veneer. Show you the elevation prints. Uh, the existing mansard uh, roof across the front elevation facing the van would be removed and replaced with a new uh, parapet wall, and that would be uh, this elevation in the bottom part of the, uh, of the drawing. Um, new planter boxes would be installed in the front entryway, and the rest of the building would remain as is. General height, uh, as measured from grade to the top of the peak roof line of the new entrance, would be about 22 feet 3 inches. Uh, that's well below the height restriction in the OS district, which is 35 feet. Uh, we do not have any information regarding signage, so we cannot address uh, those issues at this time. I'll just point out um, new data that was submitted uh, for your packets for the uh, public hearing um, includes this rendering, uh, which I think addresses some of the uh, aesthetic issues of what the, uh, the building would look like, at least uh, from the, the north side. Uh, there may be additional questions regarding um, uh, the treatment along the, uh, uh, the backside of that mansard roof, uh, the part that will remain uh, facing north. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I have uh, a few items of correspondence. Uh, yes, first, is, uh, first is uh, from our engineering division, dated February 14th, and it reads, in accordance with your request, the engineering division has reviewed the above reference petition. We have no objections to the proposed project at this time, the overall parcel is assigned the address of 15160 LeVan Road. The existing building is currently serviced by public water main and sanitary sewer, as well as private storm sewer. The submitted drawings do not indicate revisions to the building services, so we do not believe there will be any impacts to the existing systems. 
It should be noted that the developer may be required to provide stormwater treatment based on the proposed areas of disturbance, but that determination will be made once final plans are submitted for permitting. Also, a soil erosion control permit from this department will be required for the project due to its proximity to the wetland and floodplain areas. That letter is signed by David Lear, Assistant City Engineer. Next, we have a letter of no objection coming from the uh, Department of Public Safety, Livonia Fire and Rescue. That's dated February 20th and signed by Greg Thomas, uh, Fire Marshal. Uh, we have a letter from our Division of Police, Department of Public Safety, dated February 14th, that reads, I have reviewed the plans in connection with the petitions. I have two concerns in regard to the proposal. My first concern is the availability of parking spaces for the patients. The parking lot is already limited to a small number of spots. I am concerned there will not be enough spaces available for visiting patients after the staff and employees have parked their vehicles for work. My second concern is the placement of the two handicapped parking spaces. I believe having handicapped patients walk across the parking lot in order to gain access to the entrance could pose a possible safety risk for them. Uh, that letter is signed by Scott Schapansky, Sergeant of the Traffic Bureau. Our next letter uh, is a letter of no objection coming from the inspection department. Uh, that's dated March 3rd and signed by Jerome Hanna, Director of Inspection. A letter of no objection coming from our Department of Finance, dated February 11th and, and signed by Connie Kumpula, Chief Accountant. A letter of no objection uh, coming from uh, Office of Treasurer, dated February 21st and signed by Linda, Linda Scheel. And lastly, a no objection a letter from our, uh, and I think I mentioned this, um, our Fire Marshal, Greg Thomas, dated February 20th. And that is the extent of the correspondence. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Toramina. Uh, any questions for our planning staff? Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, Ms. Smiley. Well, uh, Mark, did you say that we had, or excuse me, Mr. Toramino, did you, did you say we have sufficient parking there? Uh, yes. Okay. So, um, the requirement is for 21 parking spaces and this plan yeah. provides for 23. Uh, I, I will note the, um, the concern raised by uh, the uh, Sergeant of the Traffic Bureau regarding the placement of the barrier free parking spaces. You know, that, 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 uh, there's a good chance that uh, once our inspection department reviews these plants, it, it, it would be determined that those would have to be moved closer to the entrance. Um, not sure distance wise, um, you know, it would appear that the spaces that are immediately to the west of the, of the entry would be uh, closer and those, those are probably where those barrier free spaces would have to be relocated to. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Smiley. Any other questions for our planning staff? If not, uh, is a petitioner on this item in our audience tonight? If so, please click your raise hand button. Mr. Tormina, looking at the list of names, I don't see anyone that looks familiar for this particular petition. Yeah, I apologize. I do not either. Uh, I believe the uh, remaining. Uh, oh, we do have one. Oh, Mr. Kurtzman. All right, let me. Uh, Add him to our meeting here. Good evening, Mr. Kritzman. Good evening, everyone. I certainly can't say that I was intending to speak this evening, but <laughs> if there is nobody there from Ventura Associates, uh, I will raise my hand. I am vice president of Detroit Architectural Group. And as of January 1st of this year, uh, we purchased Ventura and Associates. Oh, wow. Well, that that puts you uh, in a qualified status, I believe. So, uh, like I said, I was not planning on speaking this evening. In fact, I didn't even, I uh, wasn't even aware this item was on the agenda. I simply was checking in out of uh, curiosity of things going on in my own community. Uh, but if there's any questions I could answer, I'd be more than happy to. Okay, very good. I appreciate you uh, being here uh, and being able to speak to this item to some extent. Uh, and again, Mr. Christman, uh, just for our record, can we get your uh, business address? Uh, Detroit Architectural Group is 1644 Ford Avenue, 
in Wyandotte, Michigan, 48192. Perfect, thank you. Is there uh, any questions of our petitioner's unexpected representative uh, tonight? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Chair? Mrs. Smiley. Yes, did, uh, did you do the, the work on this building, Mr. Kutzman? Uh, no, I did not. Uh, by the time the merger of the two companies happened, this project was already in the works. There have been small changes made to it since the time, uh, you know, obviously since the beginning of the year. I believe this project has gone through ZBA, was it? Or maybe it was just first round here at Planning Commission? Okay. But in any case, no, I have not had any direct work on the project. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smiley. Any other questions? I don't see anyone else asking any other questions. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item? If so, please click raise hand. I don't see anybody doing that. So with that, uh, I will leave this up to the commission's preference if they would like to uh, move forward with this. Typically, if the petitioner is not here, we uh, um, tend to table items, but uh, we do have extenuating circumstances given how this uh, format of this meeting is. And we do have a representative from the petitioner here. So um, it's the commission's prerogative. Uh, motion is in order. Mr. Chair? Mrs. Smiley. Yes, I'll make an approving resolution that okay. the request to construct an addition and remodel of the front entrance of the existing building at 15160 Levan Road is hereby approved subject to the city council approval and the following conditions. The site plan identified as sheet number A1 dated February the 5th of 2020 prepared by Ventura and Associates Architects is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. That all parking spaces except the required barrier free parking shall be striped at 10 feet wide by 20 feet in length as required in the number of number and the number and location of the barrier free parking spaces shall be provided at the direction of the inspection department. The landscape plan identified as sheet number L1 dated February the 3rd, 2020 as revised prepared by Conroy and Associates is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. That all disturbed lawn areas shall be sodded in lieu of hydro seating. Uh, that underground sprinklers are to be provided for all landscaped and sodded areas, including the rights of way and all planted materials shall be in installed to the satisfaction of the inspection department and thereafter maintained in a healthy condition. That the exterior building elevation plan identified as sheet number A3 dated February the 5th, 2020, prepared by Ventura and Associates is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. That the exterior building elevation plan showing the north and south elevations identified as A3 dated January the 21st, 2020, as revised, prepared by NC Designs and Contracting Incorporated is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. That all rooftop mechanical equipment shall be concealed from public view on all sides by screening and that shall be of compatible character, material, and color to other exterior materials of the building. Uh, number nine, that any new light fixtures shall not exceed a height of 20 feet from grade at the base of the light and shall be aimed and shielded to minimize the stray light trespassing across property lines or on adjacent roadways. That the three walls of the trash dumpster area shall be constructed out of building materials that shall complement that of the building. The enclosure gates shall be of solid panel steel construction or durable, long lasting solid panel fiberglass. That the trash dumpster area shall be maintained and when not in use, closed at all times. That only conforming signage is approved with this petition and any additional signage shall be separately submitted for, rev for review and approval by the Zoning Board of Appeals. The specific plans referenced in this approving resolution shall be submitted to the Inspection Department at the time of the building permits are applied for and pursuant to Section 19.10 of 
ordinance number 543, the zoning ordinance of the city of Livonia. This approval is valid for a period of one year only from the date of the approval by the city council. And unless a building permit is obtained, this approval shall be null and void at the expiration of said period. Thank you, Mrs. Smiley. Is there support? Support. I heard Mr. Long first on that one. So we have a motion to approve by Mrs. Smiley, supported by Mr. Long. Is there any discussion on the motion? There's no discussion. If the secretary is ready, please call the roll. Uh, Mrs. Smiley? Aye. Mr. Long? Aye. Mrs. McHugh? Aye. Mr. Von Gerald? Aye. Mr. Ventura? Uh, Mr. Secretary, I'd like the record to show that um, the petitioner has no relationship to me or my family now or any, any time in the past. In addition to that, I'll vote in favor of this petition. 10-4. Chair Magna votes aye. Chair Wilshaw. Well, it's aye, and the motion passes. Uh, it will go on the City Council with an approving recommendation. And uh, thank you, Mr. Kritzman, uh, for your attendance and uh, helping us with this particular item. And with that, uh, also, Mr. Ventura, thank you for noting uh, uh, that there is no conflict of interest. I appreciate that. You're welcome. So with that, uh, we are finished with item number seven, and we go on to item number eight on our agenda which is 2020-03-08-02, submitted by Lincoln Dental, requesting approval of all plans required by Section 18.58 of the City of Livonia Zoning Ordinance Number 543 as amended regarding a proposal to construct an addition to the existing building at 28,000 and 28,024 Joy Road, located on the north side of Joy Road between Inkster and Harrison Avenue in the southeast quarter of Section 36. All right, Mr. Tormino. Uh, you're muted, Mr. Tormino. Thanks. Uh, this petition involves the expansion of an existing uh, office building that's located at 28,000 uh, Joy Road, which is on the north side between Floral and Deering Avenues. Uh, this site is uh, comprised actually of two parcels that together measure approximately 210 feet along Joy by a depth of 175 feet along the abutting side street, uh, which is Deering Avenue. Total site area is about 36,800 square feet or eight tenths of an acre. Uh, both parcels are zoned C2 general business and in the C2 district offices, including medical are treated as a permitted land use. Uh, the existing one-story office building is about 3,470 3, square feet. It's positioned on the west side of the uh, property uh, of what is the original parcel, 28,000 Joy Road. The adjacent westerly uh, parcel, which is 28,024 Joy, is vacant and was recently acquired by the petitioner from uh, the city. Uh, parking, as you can see, is located on the east, the south, and the north sides of the uh, building. Uh, the principal use in this case will be for uh, dentistry purposes. Uh, the addition uh, would be on the west side of the uh, building. It is one story in height at about 1,250 square feet in size. This would bring the total building area up to approximately 4,700 square feet. Uh, the expanded building area includes treatment rooms as well as a staff lounge, laundry room, mechanical room, and a laboratory. Uh, the addition does match the front setback of the existing building, which is in compliance with the C2 district regulations. Uh, the rear yard, uh, which uh, in this case abuts the side yards of two residential properties on the north side, uh, is where the minimum required setback is 20 feet. In this case, that setback uh, would be 42 feet, also in compliance with the zoning ordinance. Along the west side of the property, the setback uh, would be over 50 feet in, uh, in length. Other than the addition, no other site improvements are uh, proposed or planned. Uh, the parking layout, the landscaped areas, uh, as well as a single driveway off of Joy Road would all remain as they currently exist. Required parking in this case is one space for every 110 square feet of usable floor area. As, we, as, uh, pro as proposed, the use requires a total of 35 parking spaces, which the site plan shows exactly 35 spaces. Uh, the revised site plan uh, also shows conforming 10-foot wide spaces 
you'll recall from our study meeting, some of those spaces were shown at nine feet. Those have been adjusted to meet that minimum 10 foot requirement. Uh, where the site abuts residential to the north, the ordinance requires a five to seven foot uh, high masonry wall. There is a six foot high masonry wall along the north side of the property uh, where uh, on, at 28,000 Joy Road, uh, the plan shows the continuation of this wall to the west. This would be again, a six foot high precast concrete wall. It would match the existing wall it would be placed along the north property line of 28024 Joy Road. So there would be a continuous wall along the north side of the property where it abuts the residential district. Uh, the existing building contains face brick uh, with an asphalt shingle peaked roof. The addition would be constructed out of face brick that would match the existing building. In addition, the roof of, of the uh, expanded area would match the existing building. The finished one-story structure would have a general height of roughly 21 feet. Uh, no information is provided on signage, so we really can't comment on that. Um, with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll read out the correspondence on this item. Yes, please. First uh, letter from our engineering department dated March 7th, March 17th reads, in accordance with your request, the engineering has reviewed the above reference petition. We have no objections to the proposed project at this time. The legal description submitted by the owner appears to be correct and should be used uh, for this petition. Uh, the parcel is assigned an address of 28,000 and 28,024 Joy Road. The proposed development is currently serviced by public water main, sanitary and storm sewers. The owner has been in contact with this office regarding the project and is aware of the engineering department's requirements. It should be noted that the vacant lot on the west side of the site was once the location of a pumping station for the Detroit Water and Sewer Authority. Although the facility is no longer on the site, we do not have any records of the demolition of the structure to know if there may still be foundations in the ground. Also, permits may be required from the Wayne County Department of Public Services for any work within the Joy Road right away. A full review of the proposed development will be completed when plans are submitted for permitting. That letter is signed by David Lear, Assistant City Engineer. Next is a letter of no objection coming from the Livonia Fire and Rescue dated March 17th and signed by Greg Thomas, Fire Marshal. A letter of no objection from our Division of Police dated March 19th and signed by Scott Schapansky, Sergeant of the Traffic Bureau. A letter of uh, no objection as well uh, from the Department of Finance dated March 16th and signed by Kindy Kumpula, Chief Accountant. And lastly, a letter of no objection coming from the Office of the Treasurer dated March 17th and signed by Linda Shield. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tarmina. Any questions for our uh, planning staff? Not hearing any questions for uh, Mr. Tarmina. Mr. Kellabot is uh, here representing the petitioner. Welcome, good evening. Good evening to you too, Commissioner. We hear you just fine. If you could uh, start with your uh, name and uh, address for our record. Yeah, it's Iden Calabat of Calabat Engineering. Business address is 31333 Southfield Road, Suite 250 uh, in Beverly Hills, Michigan. Uh, although the last several weeks, it's been my home, my uh, home <laughs> for yeah. that, so, as has it been for many other people. But um, just to echo a few of the things that uh, Mr. Tormina had mentioned in his introduction, um, the building, the proposed building addition is at 1,250 square feet. Uh, which would uh, was chosen because it would not have any additional parking requirements imposed on the project. Uh, so therefore, the, the there aren't any other site improvements that are proposed at this time. Um, there is, in our discussions with the engineering department, they were concerned with um, increasing uh, uh, impervious surfaces and the additional runoff that that would stormwater runoff that that would create. Um, so we do have, uh, in addition to uh, a roof sump coming from the proposed addition, a uh, yard drain shown, and then also an oversized um, stormwater pipe that would uh, properly detain that additional stormwater. Um, that'll be, you know, all the necessary calculations and documentation will be submitted during uh, construction permits. Um, also, the catch basin that it connects to will be replaced with a pretreatment structure in accordance with the engineering department's um, uh, request so that um, this property is currently developed without any uh, pretreatment of any of its stormwater 
Um, so that would help to bring that in, into compliance as well. Uh, we also do have uh, one other item that I didn't think I heard was that we have relocation of the gas and electric services uh, currently at the building because they are currently on the west side of the building. So they'll have to be relocated to the north uh, in order to allow the proposed addition to be constructed. All right. Thank uh, aside, you, Mr. Yep, aside from that, just here to answer any of the questions that you had. Um, I think we there were a couple comments from the study meeting, which we revised and uh, addressed here in the plan that you're looking at. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate uh, your comments and for being here this evening. Is there anyone on the commission that has any questions for our petitioner's representative? Any questions or comments on this petition? I don't hear any. I don't believe if there's anyone in the audience uh, wishing to speak for or against this, uh, they're welcome to raise their hand if they would like to. I don't see anybody raising their hand. If there's no questions uh, for our petitioner, then a motion would be in order. Chairman. Mr. Ventura. I'd like to offer an approving resolution that the request to construct an addition to the existing building at 28,028024 Joy Road, <coughs> excuse me, is hereby approved, subject to city council approval in the following conditions. Number one, that the site plan identified as sheet number C3.0 dated March 12, 2020, prepared by Colabot Engineering, is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. Number two, all parking spaces except the required barrier-free parking shall be striped at 10 feet wide by 20 feet in length as required. And the number and location of the barrier-free parking spaces shall be provided at the direction of the inspection department. Number three, that the landscape plan identified as sheet number C3.0 dated March 12, 2020, prepared by Caliban Engineering is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. Number four, all disturbed lawn areas shall be sodded in lieu of hydro seating. Number five, underground sprinklers are to be provided for all landscaped and sodded areas, including rights of way. And all planted materials shall be installed to the satisfaction of the inspection department and thereafter permanently maintained in a healthy condition. Number six, the exterior building elevation plan identified as sheet number A2, dated February 5th, 2020, prepared by JSK Design Group is hereby approved and should be adhered to. Number seven, that all electric and gas meters and any other exposed utility services or meter boxes should be properly screened with deciduous type landscape material subject to the approval of the planning and inspection departments. Number eight, any new light fixtures shall not exceed a height of 20 feet from grade and at the base of the light and shall be aimed and shielded to minimize stray light trespassing across property lines or on adjacent roadways. Number nine, that the three walls of the trash dumpster area shall be constructed out of building materials that shall complement that of the building. The enclosure gate shall be of solid panel steel construction or durable long lasting solid, solid panel fiberglass. The trash dumpster area shall be maintained and when not in use, closed at all times. Number 10, that only conforming signage is approved with this petition <clears throat> and any additional signage shall be separately submitted for review and approval by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Number 11, the specific plans referenced in this approving resolution shall be submitted to the Inspection Department at the time the building permits are applied for. And number 12, pursuant to Section 19.10 of Ordinance Number 543, the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Livonia this approval is valid for a period of one year only from the date of approval by City Council, and unless a building permit is obtained, this approval shall become null and void at the expiration of said period. Thank you, Mr. Ventura. Is there any, uh, or is there a support for this motion? Support. All right, we have a motion to approve by Mr. Ventura, supported by Mrs. McHugh. Is there any discussion on the motion? M Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Caramagno. Was, was there a provision for a dumpster and dumpster enclosure? And, and, and is that really on the plan? I, I thought they were gonna put their rubbish to the curb on collection day. 
Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Mr. Calabat again. Um, yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, in accordance with uh, Mr. Carmang Commissioner Carmango's question at the study meeting, and we did add some notes to the plan, um, the trash will be set out on trash pickup days. There will not, there is no need for a dumpster enclosure or uh, a dumpster to be located on the site. Um, so I, I think uh, to his to his question, if, if the motion were to be revised to, to say if a, if a dumpster would be required at a future date, uh, that those um, requirements be met for any dumpster enclosure that would be uh, required at a future date. But as it is proposed now, there would not be a dumpster enclosure or a permanent dumpster on the, on the property. Okay, thank you, Mr. Calabat. Uh, Mr. Caramagno, does that answer your question? Yeah, that, that's fine, yes. Okay, and Mr. Ventura, did you want to make any changes to the motion to accommodate the... Uh, I agree with the petitioner, and, and let's have the resolution show that uh, should a uh, dumpster area be required on the site that it will conform. If, if I may add something to that. Of Mr. course, Mr. Tormina. Yeah, I, I think it's important in this case that that be reviewed uh, first by uh, the planning department. Uh, as to its location and, and proper screening. But what I want to avoid is that it be visible from, you know, either Joy Road or, or Deering Road for, uh, to the extent possible. But then, you know, if it's going to be placed behind the building, then we have the issue with the residences. So um, we have to have the proper screening uh, around any enclosure uh, to meet all those requirements. So route that through the planning department. So we can add that language to the approving resolution if there's no objection. Okay, Mr. Ventura, you're okay with that? I, I certainly am, and it's a good suggestion. Okay, great. And Ms. McHugh, you're all right with uh, that? Yes. All right, great. All right, uh, so we have a motion to approve with a slight modification regarding the dumpster enclosure, uh, if, it was to, if it was necessary in the future. Is there any discussion on the motion? If not, uh, if the secretary is ready, please call the roll. Mr. Ventura. Aye. Mrs. McHugh? Aye. Mrs. Smiley? Aye. Mr. Bongero? Aye. Mr. Long? Aye. Chair Magna votes aye. Chairman Wilshaw? Votes aye, and the motion passes. Uh, we will, this will go on to City Council with an approving recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Calvet, for uh, attending tonight. Thank you, Commissioners. You have a great evening. You do the same. Be safe. You as well. Bye-bye. And with that, that takes us to the uh, one last item on our agenda, uh, Mr. Secretary. And that is the approval of the minutes of the 1,150, what is that, fourth uh, public hearing regular meeting. And I show that uh, we have all members present with the exception of Mrs. Smiley and Mr. Ventura. So do we have a motion to approve? Uh, Chairman Wilshaw, our, our agenda calls that the 155th public hearing. And tonight, yes, 1,155th. That's great. Yeah. I, you know, I, I thought I'd seen that, and I, I, I uh, in the packet, I think it says the 54th. Yeah, the, the actual minutes are listed as 1,154. Uh, let me, one second, just go back here. On the agenda. It's fine on the agenda. Yeah, this this meeting is 1,156. So this would be the it would be the 1155 would be the appropriate uh, number for our previous meeting. Yeah, we'll have to double check that because yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll make sure that's uh, that's accurate. I know we had the meeting cancellation. I know there was some confusion on my end as to what the proper uh, number was. So we'll we'll verify that. Thank you. When in doubt, blame uh, Mr. Tormina, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, who did I hear on that one? Pete. Mr. Long. And then uh, was who is supporting? Chair Magno. All right, we have uh, approval by uh, Mr. Long, supported by Mr. Caramagno. If there is no objection, uh, we'll show five with uh, Smiley and Ventura uh, abstaining uh, as they were not present. 
And that takes us to the end of our agenda. Is there any other items to come before us this evening? We had a long agenda tonight and a long meeting, so thank you all for uh, sticking with us through this. Uh, if there's no other business to come before us, I will look for a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I just want to, before we adjourn, uh, Mr. Chairman, just uh, my head, our hats off to you, really, for being well run under these uh, circumstances. You did a, an excellent job uh, controlling excellent. The, the meeting and, um, you know, uh, aside from a few technical difficulties that were not on our end, but on uh, the participants' end or uh, the attendees' end. So um, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Mr. Tarmina. Hey, I'll second that. Support. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Well Thank done. you. Very Thank much you very so. Much. Uh, do we have a motion yes, to adjourn? So moved. All right. We have a motion to adjourn by Mr. Ventura, supported by? Support. By Mrs. McHugh. All right. Uh, if there's no objection, I think we can safely show seven on that motion. So if the secretary will please do that, I appreciate it. And that does take us to uh, our end of our agenda. Uh, with no further business to come before the commission, uh, we normally uh, would thank our Livonia yeah, so and staff. You can, you can thank them because they are upstairs right now. They're uh, two floors above me uh, taping this. It, it, it was uh, broadcast live on our cable uh, channel. So the crew is upstairs right now, Frank, uh, uh, Frank and me. Nice. Yes, and I, I do want to definitely uh, uh, show some uh, support and appreciation for uh, our Livonia television staff for doing their work in broadcasting this, uh, what's sort of a unique and unusual meeting uh, to our community tonight. Uh, I think it'll be a format that we're gonna have for the next few meetings. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Casey O'Neill from our IS department and Mark Tormina, uh, our planning director who set us up on this platform and did several test runs and made sure all the right pieces were in place for our meeting to go smoothly tonight. So I want to recognize uh, the effort of all of those people uh, tonight to make this meeting possible and uh, uh, show my appreciation for their work. Um, and with no further business to come before the Planning Commission, I will mark this uh, meeting adjourned at 9.50 p.m. And we'd like to say good night, Livonia, and please stay safe. Good night. <laughs>